Ahoy! A Hero Story episode 100, 190, nope. I said. 290. See that we're getting old. We're getting too old for this shit. My name's Tyler. I guess My maybe at one point you knew me as Comic Boy. We My name's Hunter. I guess at one point here. you knew me as Comic Book Hunter since yeah. that's dead. <laughs> I'm 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 Harper, and you guys you guys know what I love more than anything. Yes, I love marketing. I love corporate branding. I love promo deals. I I, I love Pizza Hut Venom. Oh pizzas. wow, he actually I love bought Pizza it. Hut Venom pizzas, how, and I love Venom wings. How did I forget now? I tried about these. This? I tried these, and they taste fine. Although there's weird side effects with them for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, I feel real funny. I don't feel quite right. I don't I know believe. what it is. I, I don't know, oh I don't know what it is. What's going I, on? Audio listeners, you have to look on YouTube just for the intro. Please alone. go to YouTube. I don't want this to is a video. I have not eaten six slices. Actually, th- to be honest, I've eaten none of it yet because I want to try it on the podcast. But I've got two slices here. The, the rest are on a plate. Look at that black. So wait, wait, wait. This, this is pizza, but they have like <laughs> venom on it. <laughs> this is a Venom Pizza Hut crossover. Also, here's the wigs. They look fucking ah! look at that. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> um, but but if I if I scan this QR code, I can uh I can win a trip to go to Las Vegas and, and dance, dance with Mrs. Mrs. Chen. Yeah, so <laughs> Bro, everyone I'll, I'll, just I'm gonna try those code. during the episode. So this is gonna be a half mukbang um and That's half symbiote up. takeover. Listen, this you is gonna be it while weird... we talk about Venom. <laughs> This will yeah, be, uh, I'll, I'll kind of preface to listeners, this is going to be an odd episode either way. What time is it right yes. now? It's 11.25 <laughs> for me right now. It's late at night. Yeah. I've got a Mike's Harder Lemonade. This is going to be a fun episode. I've just gotten everything ready. we got a lot of, sh- we have so much stuff to talk about. I know, it should. It really <laughs> shouldn't be a lot. Venom 3 review episode, but it has to be yeah. because, because it's going to gonna be Venom 3 eventually. I'm thinking... Uh, man, oh, many napkins of we should away. start with Venom. Let's just get rid of Venom 3. Let's Do you just think we should talk? No, 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 no. But Because I feel like then we're not going to want to talk about anything else. I think we would want anything but to talk about Venom 3. Right, I think yeah, we you want to talk yeah, about I know, it. I, th- I think you're right, Hunter. I think we want to address the right. elephant in the room. The Let's elephant do it. being Venom 3. Yeah, we don't want to have Harper and Venom make and be though. like, all right, so Wonder Woman. Yeah. Venom 3. <laughs> And then we'll get to the news, and then we'll get to the comics. All right, Venom, Venom Three, the Venom the it. Last Dance. We did all see it. I saw it yesterday. Mm. I saw it two days. Ago. Me. No, I saw it so yesterday too. Four weeks ago. Oh, two days so, ago. You made it a year ago. I made it. Oh, well, I was in it, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Harper saw it first. Then the next day, I did. The next day, Tyler did. And JD like is experiencing it for the fourth time now. I think. Yeah. Yeah. He just can't get out of that theater. It looks like <laughs> it's. Um. It says it was going to open at a series low. So it it could possibly bomb this movie, um, oh, which would be strange. Yeah. yeah, but it is it is the last dance, so it's not like it matters. Just to the ones that we got. Yeah, d- let's just get into it. This I was watching. Spoil- this. We we will be spoiling it. That being said, there's not much to spoil. I literally <laughs> not is we- there. I think we all agree that it's a very bad movie. It's not good. I thought no, not. that it was genuinely like. I, I said it about Joker too, but like these comic book movies we're getting, man, are <laughs> dog shit. Oh, they're just <laughs> they're just really really bad. Yeah. This one was, it, you know what it was missing? It was missing the kind of goofy oh. silly badness. Oh God, here we go. Or of especially like goo in his teeth. Of of especially Venom too. <laughs> But it, oh god, it's oh, disgusting. No. You're eating him. Mmm, yummy. I thought it was. I thought it was a very bad movie. Are they good? Yeah, it's fucking not. What does it taste like? What's the black? <laughs> yeah, I'm so curious like? what the venom goo tastes like. It's like a, it's like a mayonnaise aioli kind of thing. Oh, just with a lot that. of food color. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> <I> <laughs> That's it's like it's good, like man. it looks like the chicken's like past the rotten stage. Like, yeah. It's just... yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, it sucked so hard. It was mm. the worst Venom movie by far, and I, I don't like the first two. It's probably <laughs> the worst movie. I mean, it's worse than like uh, Spider Man Three, even as well. Like, it's obviously worse than that. Both Venom movies are also worse than that. It's the worst yeah. movie ever with Venom, and that's not saying much, but. 
it was like I feel like we're at a point with these movies where a lot of the time these fucking guys just go, how do we just rip away everything that people liked about the last mm. ones? Mm. And then mm. and then they'll give it to us and they're like, that's good though. They want that, right? They want less yeah, of no, what they like. No. We no. don't want the plot device where we see Venom as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the plot. Of, the plot is oh that Venom can't be Venom. Yeah. Venom can't be Venom. I know, who, I know. And who, like, who wanted that? The first <laughs> half of this movie I thought was like, like unwatchably bad and then like the second half is a venom movie where it's not yeah. it's not good but it's stupid venom there's like a turning point it's when he's with Risa Farns in the family with the car and they're singing david bowie i was like okay this feels like a venom like it's silly but there's a little bit of heart to it and then like that las family. vegas is stupid and the area 51 is stupid but you know what I mean? It felt like one of the other two, where it's stupid, but I'm like, oh, it's a bit endearing, I guess. But that the first be, like, 50 minutes, should... <laughs> n- literally nothing happens. You as think soon that as should we be see that family for the first time, though, as soon as we see them, we're just like, this family's going to be in this movie more than Venom, yeah. aren't they? Do you think that should yeah. be on the poster? It's got some of the things we like from the first two. <laughs> that should be a review on the poster. It's got a bit of the things we like. A little um, bit, yeah. Yeah. But also when, I feel like it ignores the first two. They're just kind a, of skipping uh, ahead a little bit, real quick. Yes. In the last act, the uh there's all the symbiotes are jumping on these scientists and becoming venoms. Mm. But in the first movie, they imply like for a symbiote and a host to be a match is very, very rare. Like they won't yeah, come out unless it's for like a specific person. Yes. Mm. But and... here they're just like, yeah, never mind. Yeah, anyone could be a venom, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So there's this term that uh comic pup created where it's basically in amazing spider-man when they were gonna the first ever clone saga clone genesis there's a page where there's a truck and it's barreling down a street and we meet these two characters called uh, george and george's wife (laughs) and they're in a car and this is an entire page of an amazing spider-man issue it's the wife saying move the car george next panel Move the car, George. They get hit by the car. Their car flips. Last panel. I told you to move the car, George. And they have coined the phrase, the move the car, George moment, where we, for some reason, spend time with characters yes. we've never met before and will never meet again. And But we spend an inordinate amount of time. We give them an entire page of Amazing Spider-Man. They are <laughs> the meet the meet uh move the car, George, is like the second build character in this fucking movie. Why were they in this movie so much? Mm. Yeah, the family. This? Yeah, the family. <laughs> they were in it so much. We kept cutting back to them. I'm like, yeah, and it did get to the point where I was like, I, I kind of do. I kind of am happy he saw some aliens. But then I'm like, why am I happy about that? It's a Venom movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're just I, like generic, I, I was, like I, happy-go-lucky yeah. family with zero problems. I'm like, mm-hmm. I fear I was wrong. I, it was unfortunate. I was so sure that the bartender was the same bartender, and they just fucked it up. But Hunter, you yeah, pointed you out that he looks that. different. <laughs> I know. Well, it, that, in my defense, it was. It did feel confusing because he. In your defense, out, this movie is incomprehensible. But there's no like, like I didn't pick up that he looked different. I just assumed that time had passed, not that it was a different universe. Because he's just been in the in bar it, for years. Well, because like we don't know how long he was actually That's in true. the MCU. It's however long That's Andrew true. and that were, and they were there for a while or like a minute. You know, you'd think they were there for a like a days. day. Yeah. So I just assumed maybe. that the dude was all fucking like disheveled because something had happened. Like no, Venom they left they went made wrong, the like, way Eddie left the universe different for some reason. They did, yeah, and like. Yeah. But it like it lit- kinda- because it starts in the MCU, it shows him blipping out, and then the shot doesn't cut, and then he blips back in. To me, that's like, well, he hasn't. That's like the same space because there's nothing mm-hmm. showing. Like at the end of Venom Two, they show the whole room changing like around him, which means there's yeah. three different ways that he's traveled the multiverse. The room changing around him, yeah. him fading out in No Way Home, and then him slipping through this portal. He's getting like, sucked <laughs> in. But it's also yeah. because when he gets sucked out, he acts like nothing happened. He's just like, what's going to drink? But that's what it's I like, meant. That's why I was so sure it was the same place and they just fucked it up. And yeah, so he like, went, no, he does look different. And I was like, oh, He okay. does look different. It didn't really matter at the end of the day. I, I was convinced that they were going to cut that scene anyway. Like that that scene wasn't going to be in the movie. They were yeah, just going to acknowledge it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like all of the logic of this. Okay, so first of all, this movie... I felt like this movie had a very somehow Palpatine returned intro where it was just (laughs) like, 
we oh introduce God. we introduce null as if we ever knew null as if null was a thing that we had built and the null first just, thing you see yeah the first thing you see yeah. is null going i'm null you guys red king and black <laughs> like it's me and then and then i'm just like i i mean i i know who you are but does anyone watching this movie like going from venom 2 to this being like oh my god yeah like a casual space, fan space dracula here like what is the point of this the way yeah. they ripped through that scene too, it was just like, yeah. like it was like this, 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 and this, and then the movie started. It was like, oh, it's been <laughs> the most amount of exposition I've ever seen at the start of a movie. It's just like this too, like, I'm yeah. not. The yeah, whole literally. movie, yeah. yeah. Dude, the guy, there was a guy in front of me fucking losing his mind at any mention of Null, and I was like, how, like, how do you find this exciting? He's so yeah, excited yeah. for the villain in a single comic event. Yes. <laughs> so it's nope. nothing to do with Spider-Man. It was genuinely there was like eight people in my theater. That first post credit scene where Null just looks up and that's supposed to be the big stinger. The guy was like, Oh my god, like freaking the fuck really? out. Really? Like, Why that was do me, you I'm care? sorry. Considering, <laughs> really? Considering there was a shot, yes, really. And considering there was a shot of him earlier where he fucking stands up and he's holding his sword. I'm like sword, yeah. I was like, wouldn't that, isn't that a more cheer worthy moment for you than just him looking at the camera? We already saw his face. It's because he it's mentioned anything in black, maybe. Is, is Null a good, Null's a good villain. Yeah. For yes. the time he spent in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, he was involved for like four years. Uh, I think it was two and a half. I think it mm-hmm. was, it was from the beginning. Oh, here we go. He's going to try a slice. Donny Cates Venom issue four Donny was Cates. his first appearance, but he's built. But let's just say issue one, he's built from the entire thing, right? He, he, built he is like the whole run. It's Venom, about no. absolute carnage, and then we get to King of Black. It's three arc story. Silver Surfer Blacks in there and stuff like that. But for all intents and purposes, it's Venom because he's a Venom villain invented in Venom for Venom. Yes, and he's hundred percent so, a Venom villain. The only vill- the only characters that really deal a lot with him outside Venom is like Silver Surfer and Thor. Thor shows up and, and knocks his jaw off. But it's like, we have a movie here where conceivably, I guess if they could have, if they made this movie a little bit longer, if this movie wasn't 20 minutes long, they could have had a movie where Null shows up at the end and fights Eddie and there's a mm. somewhat yeah. conclusive, you know, satisfying ending to this movie. And instead, again, for some reason, they just decided, let's not make this satisfying. Yeah, what is actually the point? Like, what yeah. is the point? It's like what I'm so you mad at this movie. I'm so mad at this movie. Let me eat more of my cross promotion pizza with uh, cross promoting Venom: The Last Dance with pizza. Yeah, damn dog is going to be the death of me, man. But it's but, like, um, what if, what if in Spider Man Four it ends with Peter Parker dying and then Green Goblin shows up? He's like, my time to shine. Like, this is a Spider Man like, villain, and you're bringing him in after the character's done. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's so it's like having Thanos just on his chair for all of Infinity War and Endgame, and then at the end he turns around and smiles again. Yeah, they never interact. Like, what if the Batman ended with Batman dying, and then Joker's like, "Now here we go." You mean the Riddler, uh, and then Riddler's like, "Here's a riddle." It's like wait an entire movie your fucking riddles, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it just got to remember, sense. Hunter. And, as sad as it is, Venom is not dead. We saw that he's, he's not, alive. He's not. He's, yes, he's but... definitely alive. It's just weird that they're setting this up. And I see people it's in comments trying to defend this movie being like, it's obvious that they're setting him up for Spider-Man 4. Why would not all be in Spider-Man 4? No. Why would yeah. the cosmic deity that and hasn't why... been Peter Parker once be in Spider-Man 4? And nerds, why do you want that? Have yeah, some exactly. fucking self-respect. We just complained about how badly we want Spider-Man 4 to be street level. And now you're like, no, no. Bring it in needs no. to be the Make guy of darkness. Knock down a city blow up new york city just you know sink manhattan it's gonna be sick and spider-man's gonna deal with the that. planet that's what i want in spider-man yeah, for like, what i want him to rip the century in half it's like what? in <laughs> spider-man you know? yeah and there is also there's zero chance that marvel studios are gonna go yes sony we want big bad looking cgi null to be like the yeah, main villain you can like, it's share not, yeah i gen i think andy circus was probably cast last minute i think they just CGI'd it together <laughs> they, just they said like, that andy circus you have a good voice for shit and he went yeah i'll do it the director of this movie said that they always knew that andy circus was going to play null since venom let there be carnage no you didn't well <laughs> they did. i mean maybe they I get, did. well actually andy probably because he directed, directed that movie, movie. Yeah. maybe at the end they but... maybe asked when like do you want to do, do if that's the case movie? why wasn't there a tease to null in that movie yeah, yeah. what was the credit why did you tease a spider-man cross oh yeah spider-man that didn't happen yeah 
Do you think that like this series, like we've got three <laughs> Venom movies now. Do you think that they should have had the third movie be Carnage? But then what would yeah. the second movie have been? That'd be more extensive. What would more the first exciting. movie have been? Like, this is the issue with making... Inside like, of the box clean... is just covered in black goo. <laughs> but yeah, this okay, is the issue mean. with these, like, um, villain movies. is just like, what is their villain? Ooh. Like, Venom fights Carnage, and Venom fights Spider-Man. And that's it, yeah, that's right? It. And so, like, You why... could do Null. You could do Null, yes. But you have to build Null because they built Null in the books. And that's the only reason anyone cared about Null is because by the time they had built him up, he actually did seem pretty scary. There's an issue of Avengers where Eddie Brock comes in freaking out, being like, we have yeah. to be ready. Null will be here in like a day. And everyone's like, who is that? Yeah, Except for Thor. Thor is the only one that listens to him and be like, I know who you're talking about. And yeah, it's awesome. And it's exciting. There's a there's a real sense of danger there. Yeah, and exactly. For- and and then maybe that's the thing is like, it is a marvel universe event in the comics Venom yeah like the alone x-men are even involved isn't really exciting like and they don't even do any fun venom stuff in this movie as well like if you had done some of the more outlandish like i swear to god what they there's a scene early on where eddie says of course oh, i can the- fly yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was like, yeah. he's gonna grow wings. He's he doesn't grow, grow wings. wings. They don't no, do he anything. He attaches fun. himself to a plane. <laughs> he attaches himself. How does Tom Cruise do this? You Shut had, up. He just had to say that. Shut oh, up. Oh, 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 I get it. Yeah, and it's like, wh- why not? Why is this movie devoid of fun Venom shit? Why did they take that away? Like the horse is fun, I guess, but it's a minute. And also Not stupid even. looking. <laughs> like it, it ends with a balls joke too. <laughs> and it ends with a balls joke. I just am so and I and I can't even say I'm disappointed because this is the third Venom movie. Like I knew what I was getting into. Mm-hmm. But it's just it is one of those movies that's just like baffling that this is what this was. I just wish they did with the original, like how the and Chris and the second one started where Venom's talking about a hive mind. Mm-hmm. And he says that he knows Spider-Man. But then we get nothing. <laughs> Continuing that's what, that. If they were going to do this, it, this movie really, and I don't know why Sony wouldn't leverage this. This movie could have just been at least a Spider-Man, maybe not Tom, a, a Spider-Man and Venom team yeah. up. Yeah, just against Null. someone. But against oh, Null fuck. would have been fine, right? Spider-Man and Venom versus Null. Yeah. One movie done, and that's kind of what anybody wanted in the first place out of this yeah. franchise. Because anyway. then it's anything, like it's just anything. Then that's but anything. This is yeah. not anything. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like, the, the big, the big bugs that like that Null sends after all, all the, the symbiotes, and like their their abilities, we like they can just swallow things, and then like a wood chipper just shoot them out the back, and it's just yeah. eating symbiotes and just like <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, the, that, the, that is the villain of the movie. Though, tell it's Iggy for to be in this movie, man. Like. Definitely not. Which is Tom Hardy there, one? I don't know. (laughs) Tom Hardy, because he has gone and he said that this is the end of Venom. This is the end of Venom. The Venom movies. We're done with Venom movies. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done playing Venom. (laughs) And yeah, well, this. I mean, that's our biggest miss, isn't it? We we discussed off podcast. We were going to do a a Venom and Eddie Brock talks to the Penguin skit because they both have funny voices. And then the end of this movie had the Vemguin in it. Yeah, we coined that term and we didn't get on top of it. And they've (laughs) taken from it. Sorry, guys. But But it is it is strange again that just this movie, the villain is a henchman. And they do like with this no dialogue with no dialogue or character because he's not a character because yeah. he's a because he's a mini boss. And the and then the like ending of this movie, not the actual ending, like the ending battle is this weird. Everyone gets a symbiote, just run, mm. just run and grab one off the shelf fighting this guy. <laughs> and there's elemental ones like there's a fire symbiote that controls mm. like lava power that we see that we see for like three shots, but they never focus on it. Yeah, and none of them get names and none of them do anything interesting. And like in Lethal Protector, which is the first Venom miniseries. We're going to be a Lethal Protector. Oh, gonna be le- and you thought Lethal Protector was a shit name. But the, in, in that book, they that is the one where he fights Carlton Drake. 
and they extract all the symbiotes from him, and that's where you get like Phage and Lasher and Ryan. What an old time terrible Green. name. Which one? Carlton Drake. Carlton Drake, yes. It's one of the worst names I've um, ever heard. And so I felt like they were kind of going with that, I guess, where it's like we've extracted or we at least have all these symbiotes. Where from? From asteroids, they said? I guess. Yeah, they all landed on yeah. Earth at the same yeah. time, apparently. I guess, right? Because I just thought it was Venom and Eddie, or Venom and Riot. Here's another question. Riot's whole plot in the first movie was he was like, we have to go home. This movie's like we don't want to go home. We, we want. want to go we home fled home, home specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah it's, that's great. Well, point. like, you, you did you really cast Andy Circus after Venom two? Did you really think yeah. about it? At I don't all? think like, they even watch Venom one or two. <laughs> I would. I'd be willing to believe that all of the null stuff was reshoots, like yeah. late in the game, because they were just like, oh, this movie's about a henchman. You know. Yeah. Like yeah, they we, gotta, just, we gotta have something that'll get people in the theater be like, oh, like, those in you, this. You can tell when I'm, like, this was a pure writer's strike movie, obviously, right? Yes, absolutely. I saw people And it makes me that. wonder that what like they did actually plan to do and what, because of that, they missed out on. Like, was this movie supposed to be some sort of bigger thing where they were actually gonna fight Null and they didn't have time to film it because of the strikes and whatnot? Was it gonna have some, if any, and I know this is wishful thinking silly me for thinking there'd be a spider-man thing in a venom movie but what was there ever a plan to put any of that like i just want to know what venom the last dance looked like when they first brainstormed it and if it was fucking this it must have must have been this without no i think you're right with an all reshoots and even then they probably decided null near the end because they're just like we got nothing we gotta have something yeah. to set up a future, even though this is the last movie. So they pick Null and they put in the trailer. And even then, they might not even have a, had a voice at the time. So the internet being like, "Is yeah. Norman Reedus?" Like, oh my god! Yeah, God, the <laughs> internet being like, "If it's not Norman Reedus, why, the, why, why, why would you him? want that?" Eddie, <laughs> the guy with the I'm crossbow. Shoot, Eddie. Yeah, like Norman like Reedus this. is in the trailer no, to, Rick. to the John Wick spinoff Ballerina, and he yeah. stands out so much of that I'm like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pops yeah up, it's like, like, it's I'm like, oh, it's Daryl Dixon. <laughs> yeah, there he is. <laughs> so he would stand out a lot here. It doesn't matter who plays Null in the end. Do you think there's a possibility that between, like, when they released that first teaser trailer, and then the second trailer that then mentioned Null? Do you think Null was in this movie when that first trailer came out, or do you mm. think they put him in after that? I don't think he was. Does he say that Molly, would be my creator in the first trailer? Does he say any of that? Oh, I don't he, think. Oh he no, does. no, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. But it's he doesn't. so it's po- a- like clearly this was an, a writer strike movie because, and they must have been kind of lucky in that regard because it was. You I'm don't hiding. have to film. I'm hiding. You don't have Eddie. to know necessarily what Venom Eddie. is saying when they film it. So they could, you know what I mean? So Tom Hardy could have just been saying things out loud. And Actually, then just fucking Dan Will well, pointed that out you know on, I mean? on his review. He was like, I'm pretty sure all the Venom lines were recorded way after the fact because everything Eddie says is like vague enough that like yeah. it can answer or set up anything. Like, so you're telling me there's a bad guy? It is no. Oh, he sounds like a bad guy. Like, he that's, sounds like that's a bad guy. Yeah, that's the kind of dialogue in this movie. This movie is directed by the writer of the past two Venom movies. Yes, yes. Now I would which have I said thought... I did say it would be consistent with those two in that regard, and it was. I, yes, I would yeah. have thought that she would want to do this as like a passion project out of love for having made the first two Venom movies, no. but it feels like she was definitely just there because they could not get anyone else to do it. You know, yeah, and she's like, my uh, mind they got Andy Circus to direct the fucking second one. That's still crazy to me. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, also, that the one is the best the one. Best one. <laughs> it, is it is the best, the best one. one. Yeah. No, so like... I'm at the point where I'm like, oh, let there be carnage is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> it has the scene where he goes into the club room with his cool costume. To yeah, I know. Yeah, no. It's it's it, like it is... it, at least it's fun. It's an hour and a half. It's fucking it's easy to watch. It's fun. I think it is the one of these movies that gets what it is. It is the one that accepts, yes. okay, this is goofy. For some reason, we've gone wacko, silly comedy for this. It also that's, looks that's the best, too. Be. Like, this it movie does look good. Like, it actually it's... does look good. Carnage looks too. cool, yeah. yeah. Carnage, Carnage looks cool, but, like, the cinematography and the lighting of that movie, the CGI, like, it all looks 
like the they humor put this too. one looks cheap i kind of was excited for the humor of this movie but i didn't i don't think i laughed once no i think I'm... the best i think the best parts are just with like it's him shuffling through like fucking like desert and just the way tom hardy commits to those he's a very good physical actor like he is yeah. like he is very he's 110 percent, and i think he would do things occasionally, and I'm like, all right, that is funny. Actually, <laughs> I did laugh when he beats the family for the first time and give him food, and then I was like, oh, he just throws it. Yeah, he back. throws it, yeah. yeah. And like, like Reese and character just doesn't even bring it up. <laughs> <He's> just like, <laughs> oh, oh. You know what I laughed at? It was so stupid, but it's when he sees the, uh, it's at the very beginning when he d- is in the in the bar in his universe, and the guy's like, what were those tendrils? And he goes, I was born with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It is like so that, that stuff is goofy enough that it's yeah. like okay. Yeah. I, like, like, I liked movie. I liked the shot of, of him walking away in the cowboy boots. Yeah. <laughs> like like the running gag that he can't get a pair of shoes when they like when they zap him and they take him away and he sees them on the ground shoes. and goes, My shoes. It was like like my partner turned to me, it was just like, oh <laughs> What do you think? Maybe this was the best movie ever. Maybe yeah. it was good. Like I, she she God. seemed to feel okay. That dance with Mrs. Chen, that Gotta That's be the, the dumbest part of the movie. Of any movie ever, maybe. Like the fact like the dance and whatnot. Like it wasn't even It's not even the dance, it's just the reason why. Oops. Oh, Miss Chen just yeah. happens to be there. Yeah. Do you think like because I just think it was so it should have been funny, I guess, Venom going like on a little dancey dance, but it was just cringe. Yeah, and that's also like, the most amount of Venom screen time. Yeah, I like why Abba too, wasn't but wasn't it funny? I don't. It was, it was just because it's just like the whole Circus reason. Made it funny. That's all I'm saying. Like, <laughs> In Venom, he's not even be Venom hilarious. for fights and stuff. It's just like I can't be Venom at all. I can't do it anymore. Mm. But then at this point, it's just like yeah. Yeah, mm. no, because is Venom Venom's in love with Mrs. Chen? Like that's like a secret. If you watch these movies, it it's like he's in love with Mrs. Chen. I guess because even then food. when they start dancing, he goes, "Did you guys practice this when I was sleeping or something?" Tom Hardy <laughs> says that. So <laughs> Tom Hardy, um, not even Eddie. Bro- Tom Hardy said that. I'm gonna yeah. give. I'm gonna give this movie some ups. I'm gonna give it some ups. Yeah. The part where, like, this is an the opposite, op- where... opposite compliment sandwich. No, no, I'm yeah, no, I'm just actually just gonna give it a compliment. The part where it all seems lost and all the other big bugs come through, and Venom and Eddie have like the this is it power conversation, and then Venom like sacrifice himself, and like when he puts the door on Eddie and then splooshes like his hand, his hand on that, uh, that was good. I like. I'm I'm just gonna say flat. Not his hand. Did you? (laughs) Was his dick? Whatever. (laughs) Did you feel something when Venom fucking? died a little bit i did a little bit. i i didn't i, I did a little of... bit i'm so invested in those two as like either a platonic friendship or just a straight up couple yeah, like I, i'm weird. uninvested in them enough yeah. that, I think, like i, I think... felt something i wish eddie brock reacted a bit more he just kind of laid there it was like i think yeah. he was cooked bro i think he was fucking cooked but yeah he, he didn't he didn't yell he didn't cry he just kind of went like you know what this yeah, is like hopeless Hunter, yeah. I know you'll understand this because you are the only other person that watched the movie, but remember at the end of Shazam 2 when Billy oh. died? Yeah. When Billy Batson dies, I was like half expecting Wonder Woman to show up in this and resurrect <laughs> Venom, but <laughs> the fact that this movie does end with a non-ironic Maroon Cheers 5 to the ones that we got. I know, the Maroon 5 montage <clears throat> of the Venom trilogy with a lot mm. of scenes just from this movie, just from for, for, for what we just how much watched, Eddie misses Venom, and the last the mm. last shot of this movie is Eddie Brock staring at this at the it's, Statue it's of Liberty drone footage of saying, Tom Hardy looking yeah, at this, saying, <laughs> "I won't forget you, buddy." And it's okay, and buddy. then the movie cuts to black. Bree just turned to me and she went, "Dead ass!" Like he's <laughs> actually like like there wasn't like another scene where Venom like you know goes up and like touches him on his shoulder and be like i'm still here i'm okay and no the movie mm. ends cuts to black this is the end of the venom trilogy yeah why just... memories bring back memories bring back that scene too if you guys remember those scenes of tom harry walking through new was york the that was shoot. like that was like in august <laughs> yeah, yeah i remember like, i remember just yesterday the... yeah that i just remember like... the shot of him walking through new york like yeah, and everyone's like, "Oh, I guess I do Venom reshoots." Exactly. And it there was just for, for this, like, flashbacks to what yeah. we just saw. 
do you think that like because i i thought again silly me that venom would go to new york and just be the superhero in new york like he would be the spider-man of this universe. he still can he still can I guess I didn't watch the second post credit scene, but I did read it online. There's a black yeah, it's, cockroach. It's a black, yeah, because they keep fucking. They they bring it up like four it times. That movie. Cockroaches can survive anything. It is the worst post credit scene I've ever seen. No, yeah, because it, no, this is worse. At least more pieces like hilarious. And actually, this is probably worse because these credits, I guarantee, are longer. They're they are, and there's That's a reason so for that. Long. There's a reason for that. This oh. is the first Sony movie where they. It, where they name each individual person in the orchestra. Oh, oh okay. okay. They didn't just credit the, the speed, orchestra. Just, they they said every single name. So it's a 15 minute. If the minute speed credit. is on one, just put it up to 1.2 then, and then put all the names. 1. 5, in. honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or but two. Or it is very like long. Orchestra. <laughs> I mean, that's what they usually do. But yeah. it's literally the, the bartender escaping from Area 51, walking yeah. away, then it comes to a cockroach. Yeah. That's it. Yes. It was bad. It was really bad. I was really... I. I didn't expect much from it. Again, it's Venom three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's Venom three, it but is. like, I wanted anything, you know. Yeah. Please. Do you guys think we'll see Tom Hardy's Venom again? Without a sh- beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yes, he'll be in Secret Wars. Did you see the cockroach? He'll be in. That's true. He'll be in Spider Man Four. He'll be in something. I don't like, think he'll be in Spider Man Four. I don't, I don't know. I'm saying hypothetically, well. he'll be in something. You know, like Secret Wars, maybe. Yeah. 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 I, I can realistically see him coming through a portal in fucking Secret Wars and being like, "Hola, bitches!" Like I can, I can <laughs> see. I can see. They don't back. explain that Venom's alive now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, they because probably no one, won't. But that's exactly why would why would they explain? Like, we're not going to get a scene nobody where they explain in, how it happened. Yeah, and nobody in that movie would ask because nobody's met him. Spider Man yeah, wouldn't it, go just... like, "Oh, Venom, I thought you were dead." He'd go, "I've never met you before. I don't know anything about you. What are you? What you the fuck, Doctor New? He's not the Ten Bond. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was Iron Man. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Man, that was a good love. impression. Holy when shit. Venom comes in, they don't explain how he's alive, but it's like he knows everyone. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, Venom can break the fourth wall. Oh wait, wait, no, wait he doesn't wait, break the fourth wait, wall. No, no, he no, acts no. like as if he's been around. Like he sees he's just been in the That's MCU. Four. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. They've got all the cards on the table. They can have Deadpool make a funny, witty remark about it, can't they? I thought you were dead. No, I was a cockroach. That's it. Yeah, that's literally you, all. They is mean. that what we want out of Avengers Secret Wars? Is <laughs> no. Deadpool to make a no, joke it's about n- Venom Three. No, <laughs> but we just is got that, a Deadpool Wolverine movie with fucking Wesley Snipes playing and Channing Tatum Gambit. Like that is that. It's just. It's just. This is the point we're at. Like I know Martin Scorsese says it, but it's like the death of cinema. Like it really is. <laughs> this is the point we're at. Yeah. Bro- but like, it, like it really, it's Deadpool. gotten to the point. Like, have you, have we walked into a superhero movie <clears throat> like outside of the Batman? Like, not going into it, going who's get, who's going to be in this? Like, I walked into Deadpool and Wolverine, not being like. Deadpool and Wolverine. I knew, okay, this is going to be just full of like random ass people. I'm curious to see who it is. And like, we've been, we've over time, we've been like slowly indoctrinated into that being the only thing we care about. Like it used to be, yeah, it sucks. we get Chris Evans in Thor 2 in a funny cameo where Loki's mm-hmm. pretending to be Captain America. And we're like, that's so cool that he's that's there awesome, Bruce yeah. at the end of Iron Man 3. But now it's like, it's like if Multiverse of Madness doesn't have at least Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, it's shit. You know what I mean? Like, and Yeah, then, I'm going to shoot up the theater. It. It's like, God, But to be down, fair, man. Multiverse of Madness also set itself up for that. Like, we, we forget how fucking random that Illuminati scene is. I think that is the worst part of that movie because it is the most just like, it's out of place. Here you go. Here's fucking Patrick Stewart and Black Bolt from the Inhumans show that only three people watched, and I'm one of the three. Yeah. Fucking Peggy Carter from What If? Fucking Monica Rambo. Like, it was just yeah. shit that we don't care about. Yeah. Like, who gives a fuck? It was but John Krasinski. It, wait, John Krasinski. Yeah, watching. exactly. He's Mr. Fantastic. So the internet can be happy when we cast Pedro the Pascal. The worst Mr. Fantastic suit ever. Well, it's because it's just pure CGI. There's nothing. It's yeah, pure just CGI. a bunch of lines. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I know what you mean, Harper, because it does feel like, especially MCU movies, where it's just like, all right, who's going to be in this one? Yeah, exactly. Like, Guardians, I, I didn't, you know, Guardians didn't feel that with, but I was definitely, sure. like, even True. fucking Agatha's doing that now, where it's like, 
Yeah. Fucking what's his name was in it? Evan Peters was in it. So it's like I did say that. I saw Ralph Bones. Yeah. Like Tyler, I saw another thing from Agatha and it looked like the worst thing I'd ever said. What is going on with that show? I thought you said good. it's good. It is good. Is it? Yeah. I actually, saw fucking Wiccan's bro, I, actually, like maleficent costume. It is the oh, worst yeah. thing I've ever seen. Well, you know what? Maybe you're just homophobic. Maybe you're yeah. no, 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 no. I Wait, actually okay. did see. Uh, apparently, uh, Agatha is retaining like viewership like crazy. the 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 latest episode has been up. It was up thirty five percent from the premiere. Like, this people love this fucking wow. show. You are enjoying it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, I think I'm happy I will watch for it. it. But God, like all I hear is praise, and then anything I see, it, I'm like. That that looks really bad. What's going on here? Like, <laughs> feels like some sort of weird disconnect that I have with reality. It's like you, Tyler, watching Game of Thrones at its peak while everyone's saying that oh, it gets bad. Yeah, You're like, how is that possible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do hope Secret Wars is a little groundless, not just cameos. But I would be okay if Eddie Brock. What do you was... mean it's Robert Daddy Jr.'s Doctor Doom? I know. Just I, I don't I don't want like a ton of cameos. Like I want a small team like Secret Wars has, where it is a team in this new no. universe. Yeah, but well, actually, go fuck yourself though. That's what they think. Okay, I know, I know, but the Tobey Maguire, he's in Secret Wars. Um, you know, you know, an end game that montage where they're planning and it's just like it cuts to them like eating. We got, got, I was just thinking that time, like, yeah, the montage, or they're like, yeah, they're pointing at the whiteboard, they're like making a plan, like all of them together. Imagine that scene, but Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock's there in his sweaty Hawaiian t shirt, and he's just like listening. What is up with him sweating through his shirts? I know, yeah, how does he act to that? Do they do they just pour water in him? I bet he just like does it though. I bet he just forces the. Oh, can you get a bit more sweaty? Yeah, hold on. Fifty push-ups, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, I know what you mean about Secret Wars because it's gonna be a fucking weird movie. Obviously, like mm-hmm. it, presuming it is what we think it's gonna be, which it probably will be. That. Yeah, it will be. Probably will have venom in it. Um, on on the elite strike force. You know, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic is going to choose Eddie Brock from this universe to save on the life raft. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, do you think if they don't bring him back that they really shouldn't even waste any time and just do Venom again, like in the MCU now? Yeah, like, just cast someone else. Is like, who cares, you know? Yeah. Do Doesn't people have, have an attachment to Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock? Maybe. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I do maybe. a little bit. Yeah, no, no I, do, I actually I'm, do. But is it like to the point where it's like, oh, you can't cast anybody else? Yeah, no, no, he, no, he's no, the no, Hugh he Jackman could... of Venom. No, no, he's the Hugh Jackman no, of Venom. He could be anyone else. He is. <laughs> he is at this point, though. He is, for better or worse, he is. You know what? We don't like Robert, to admit Robert it, Robert but if they, do, if, if they do serious Venom, I feel like people will be like, oh, well, it's not, it's not, it. it's not Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy could have done it. Robert Downey Jr. could play Iron Man and Doctor could have done it, I know. Let's just have Tom Holland play Eddie. Yes, in a different universe. Or get even just get Tom Hardy to play him again in a different universe as a different version of Venom. Yeah, you know what's crazy that. in this yeah. movie as well? Venom trilogy never gets the logo. This felt like yeah, yeah I know. Never, yes. has, never has this. <laughs> yeah, well, Do you know like, what goes hard? What in the first movie when he says mask and then copy and then he transforms he beats those guys yeah. up. that is that's sick that sorry is i just cool. gotta bring that but up. in this i had to do a funny thing oh i we found what i was trying to look are... for we're venom we... i found what i was trying to look for <laughs> <laughs> is that you right now that's me that's me it'd that's be cool if they did mask again instead of the last day just joking about how they can't get the line right yeah we are venom yeah is venom is venom stupid like do we just <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, is Venom stupid? Yes. What do you mean? Yeah, yes, I think he but, is. But, like... I'm my world guy. I'm kind of a loser. <laughs> he does say that. <laughs> That's true. Like you, say he says. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was, I guess, at the end when he does say, like, I'll never forget you, buddy, was vaguely attached to their bromance. Like, oh, as two yeah, weirdo I, I, I losers. Felt, like, I felt obviously, something. We spent the trilogy with them. I really did not expect Venom to die in this movie, and for it to be like stone cold, like yeah, no, he's dead. I did expect him at the end, looking at the Statue of Liberty, where maybe like his little head pops up from his. Can you yeah, imagine? Okay. Wow, imagine what if a the look. Statue of yeah. Liberty turned into Venom. Yeah, or yeah. Oh, get me closer, Eddie. <laughs> I I did I actually honestly I did feel I felt something when he said I really did want to see it, and he's like, what? Yeah. He's like, the statue of Liberty. like 
I don't know, man. That part in the with the when they were in the helicopter and up to the I think the acid being the way that he went out. I was hoping for the explosion to happen a bit sooner. Like it dragged on for so long. I also yeah. love that like in Venom Sacrifice, he just gets Shuatel edgy for like murders. Yeah. Like he she would tell him people gets covered him. in acid and then has to blow himself up after <laughs> being stabbed. Like, dude, in the worst day of his life, it's so bad. It's so he funny. He died boxing. three times. Bro. What was um yeah. the point of his character? That's a, I did. No more what sorcerers. Was the point of the movie. What was the point of the movie? Great, great question. Can we move Venom, on? Venom yeah, I was last... gonna say, can we do cover card? Venom the Last Dance. Yeah, I Oh, what do you guys rate it? Mind boggling. I gave it a two on the letterbox, which I think is generous and fair. I think I also gave it a two stars. Yeah, I think I'll move it to two after talking whether you guys have realized maybe this is the best movie ever. It's it's not the yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, it's not the no venom. It's or so sorry, it's no Joker 2. Yes, you're right. You're right. I, as someone who's seen Joker 2, agree. (laughs) It kind of twittered the line a little tiny bit, though. I moved it to two stars. I'm all right. We're all right that's I'm that's good. fair yeah, I, yeah. I, I honestly hunter when i saw yours i was like not oh, a bit harsh mate after i just came out of it like oh that was bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow all right well that's that's venom three that was venom with the yeah. three all right i have a i have the dc news all written out if you don't all right well it's crazy because i do too bitch oh, I'm the news man. guy now fucking oh, man. Speak <laughs> when spoken to oh man so oh, man. <laughs> I can we before we move on? Can we? Well, um, this episode is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Go out We're now not and buy the Pizza Hut We're Venom: The sponsored. Last Dance crossover, so you can win a chance to go to Las Vegas and dance with Mrs. Okay. Chen. Do you guys think we're not, we're not getting I, paid? I guess before we move on, do you guys think JD would love Venom? No, no. What do you mean? JD doesn't love anything. <laughs> like if he was the host. Oh, if, if he, he yeah, he would love the power. Yes. <laughs> he oh, would love the God. power. It was. <laughs> it's funny imagine to... that picture you're showing of how hard he was like, did was... JD did that? <laughs> Fuck, it is was, that the is... thumbnail? <laughs> it is funny to me that like this move, like they establish, I think in Venom 2, like, like obviously they share the body together. So like everything Eddie does, Venom is there. So they just kind of like are boys. Like, like they mentioned that like they watch movies together and like watch TV together. Like they just riff. That's fun to yeah. me. I would watch a movie of them just doing You that. sold my chickens. <laughs> yeah, I, but I would just watch like a mystery science theater of them watching bad movies. Venom and Eddie. Mm. Maybe that's what well, they Can you imagine? Been. Remember when remember when Ryan Reynolds got Korg on that fucking couch? I'd watch yes. that if it was Venom. That'd be <laughs> sick. Yeah. The Deadpool and Venom or just Eddie and Venom? Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's actually move on. I'm sorry. I probably... yeah, anyway, yeah. I yeah. wanted to bring this up real quick. A couple weeks ago, I kept saying, oh, my God, there's a bit of news. That I swear I forgot. We forgot. Oh, that's right. Did you remember? I remembered it. it. Yes. Wow. We never talked about this. At least I'm pretty sure we didn't. That DC announced a dynamic duo animated movie. Did we talk about that? Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a while ago, I guess. No, we that didn't. DC announced this movie that's not going to take place in the DCU, <coughs> but it's an animated movie made by oh, a studio that's oh. going to take that's going to be like puppeteering and, and cell animation, all this kind of cool stuff. And it's going to be about Dick Grayson and and uh, and Jason, Jason Todd. Todd, and that sounds weird. Cool. Yeah, that sounds cool, but like weird. <laughs> yeah, but it's an animated movie. It could be whatever it is. It's cool. I guess so, but I'm just so curious about what they mean by like CGI and puppeteering. Puppet, but it sounds cool. I don't know what that means. It sounds yeah. cool. I'll watch it's it. Some sort of like is it like Coraline, but with Maybe. more puppet? Yeah, it says, is it, and, is and it, it, we heard that it's going to have like a, it's going to be America, potentially America. released in 2028. Which is great. Why even tell us? Why, Why even tell us? <laughs> Why even tell us? <laughs> Love knowing that. You know what I was thinking about today? Remember that Wonder Woman game they announced three years ago? And they have not <laughs> yes. said a, they're not no, a peep. no updates. Why even tell they, us? It's like Elder Scrolls Five was announced like seven years ago. Yeah, Elder and, Scrolls even, Five is Skyrim. What are you? First, six, 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 <laughs> six. They announced even. fucking Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim. It still isn't coming. Hunter <laughs> <laughs> like Adam sucks. Oh, I want to show that real quick. You're a fucking piece of shit. We all don't like you. I know. Anyway, get some more venom pizza. I was gonna get more venom pizza. He, oh. back, he has more me. <laughs> 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 um. So the first bit of news I have pre Comic Con, which Comic Con was fun, by the way. I did like going to Comic Con. It was nice. Yeah, it was, it was nice. like your first was, one in a while, right? Yeah, it was the first Comic Con I've been to since I was um 
He actually did get more venom pizza. I thought you were gonna no, joke. I thought you were joking. No, no. I thought um, I thought you were gonna leave and have more of your venom pizza. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> consumed you more. Um, but it was funny. It was the first Comic Con I've been to since I was thirteen, which was last year. So yeah, I, I think I had a fun time. It was cool. Um, but this was pre Comic Con though. They revealed this the oh, crypto the soon? super dog. Yeah. In James Gunn's Superman. That's cool. I like it. Yeah. I, like I think James Gunn's a good person to be able to make crypto. Okay. <laughs> what a, Would you buy his crypto? I don't know why they said it like that. James Gunn is a good person to <laughs> do crypto. <laughs> like you were unsure of it every step of the way. Like, yeah, like, like oh, James but he's, Gunn's he's a good person. Not a good person. <laughs> um but like he's but, good at animals. He tries animals. So. Yeah, he loves animals. I think I think do you hear the story about why crypto is in this movie? He said that. Yeah, because it's it's based on his dog that he rescued yes. like four years ago. Yeah, so he rescued a dog, and and he's he's such a friggin' like he's he's got storytelling in his bones. Where he the way he described it, he was like, because I I was at the Creature Commandos panel, and they asked him about crypto on the panel. He described it the same way, where he was like, uh, as my dog, I I got this dog. He was like in a real, he was on a hoarding situation with 60 other dogs and he was real rabid when we first got him. And I kept wondering, what if he had superpowers? And then I thought of how to put him in the script. I'm like, you motherfucker, just put crypto in the goddamn script. You know, like, (laughs) like I under, I like, and I appreciate, obviously this is what you're supposed to do in stories. You bring a bit of you into the story. So people (laughs) complaining like, oh, it's nepotism. James Gunn's hiring his own dog for this movie. Like, shut up. You know, it's like, it's, you know, he's going to put, to me, it's what he knows in it. But it's weird. He's got such a big story about like, just like, I can't believe he looked at the dog and went, what if that dog had superpowers and not, hey, I'm making Superman. I should put the super dog in it. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's that easy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. But I I like the cryptos in it. There's, what's up with the controversy about the fact that he's not a, a white lab? Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? I thought yeah, it's, it's a, a dog. dog. It's a dog. A dog. I would understand yeah. if it was like a chihuahua. They but bullied it's the dog. You like... see, the dog had to had to take down his Instagram account. They bullied the dog. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> they bullied... No, I'm kidding. Oh. But they... I thought it was like the ugly dog in Deadpool. Like it actually does have an account. Like that. That would make me so miserable. <laughs> no, it's a cute. I think it's a cute little strongly dog. I, not, I like it. And there's a version of crypto that looks like that. And even if there wasn't, I wouldn't give a shit. It's you a know? dog. It's a dog. It's a yeah. dog. It's a space dog that has heat vision that, and can <laughs> fucking fly. Yeah. I don't care what kind of dog it is. You know? You I see think people that, comparing yeah, it. You remember the remember crypto in Titans, where the first thing he does yeah. is <laughs> redirect a missile into <laughs> a guy. Yeah. Like I remember watching an episode and just being like. Even crypto murders people in this. Yeah, show. even they've, they've even below character up. assassinated the dog. The dog. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't the missile heading towards Superboy too? Like he would. Yeah, he redirects that. it into a human. Yeah. He would survive that. Yeah, like you're saving no one. You're just even he would survive it if he just you know like got in front of it. You know, it's like yeah. I don't know. Tyler, like, Game of Thrones season eight is like what Titans is to superheroes. Yeah, yeah. 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 there's a good stop, here. stop it. Very <laughs> It's crypto. All right. Uh crypto is gonna be good. I, I I think it's I think it looks cute. I think I like the picture. I don't know what's up with the fact that all the reveals from this movie are kind of weird, uncanny looking CGI. It things. looks like a it looks like a weird. play. It yeah, does look weird, like, a, like projector yeah. thing too. Uh but I appreciate the reference to All Star Superman, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And I think it'll be good. Uh the next thing I have here is the creature commandos trailer. Any of you guys watch that? No. No. Come on. <laughs> It, I think I will watch it too. It looks who good. I, listen, listen, shut up. Shut up. Because <laughs> who cares about the Guardians of the Galaxy? You I think know? I will like, watch it. I, just, I think it looked good. Care. I went to the panel and it, the panel was all about creature commandos and James Gunn was really glazing it. Like, obviously he has to because like it's another thing he's made. This but is the did, big, I, greatest thing since The Flash. Yeah, <laughs> I think it looked fun. I think the characters look interesting. I think it'll just be a fun show. I don't know. I don't really think yeah. about it. He said that the reason that this is the first thing in the DCU is only just because they had been working on it before he got hired. And so like they, it's ready now and it's going to be canon. So technically it just is the first thing. It is. Yeah. That's... What? Would you prefer they delayed it or something? 
I make it just not. It is like a little canon weird, to the universe. Yeah. Just make it, it its own fucking thing. But like Rick, yeah, Rick like, Grimes that's what I'm saying. It, make it not the canon movies. to the universe. No, but it, but the characters are gonna be in these movies. Yeah, Rick Grimes so seniors and Superman. Anyway. It just I don't know. It's that it seems it's like Agents of Shield being the first thing in the MCU. That's like, true. It is. <laughs> yeah, like, it is. Like, yeah. like it's I know weird I, optics. I, it doesn't really yeah. matter. It's weird optics, definitely. But I don't care. I, I should have been like after Superman. I think it's weird to start a unit like you are doing Superman and not starting the universe off with what should be like the most important movie yeah, I, that, I mean, that DC's done in forever. I don't know if they should have delayed it or something. I understand I that just should. time time constraints around like this is how they create it. It takes this long to come out. I think it looks fun. I don't really. I'm not like I'm not bashing like 2D animation either, but it just feels weird that a show. I mean, I don't know about like, that. Well, man. even if it was live yeah, action, it's just a weird. A lot of team. the times, you're like, oh, you know, 2D animation sucks. Specifically, I do say that, and I say that people who have committed to that as a like life decision and career are fools. I've I've yes. said that quite often. It's like, oh, but, like, it just like years from now, like if you're it. just like, I want to binge the new DC universe, it'd be like, okay, you got to start with the animated series about Weasel and well, Rick Flag's dad. Start yeah. which looks, you start with yeah. the which looks like squad. fucking Justice League War. Like, it doesn't look like it's something. <laughs> no, it looks good. Like... Watch the trailer. It looks good. <laughs> it looks good. Like, I, I, I saw it's a lot like of good Instagram gore. Group. It looked, it looks it looked good. fine. It looked no, like okay. any other 2D animated. We'll, we'll, it looked we'll good. We'll move on. God, this is a real weird one they didn't announce. They announced this at Comic-Con again. Jim Lee and Friends panel. We're getting Hatouche. Batman Hush 2. H- Batman Hush oh, 2. Oh, yeah. H- well, the logo H- is H2. S-H. Hatouche. Um, <laughs> and it's going to begin in know, the what issue. Talk- what are you talking about? This looks this looks like any other animated show. But I don't care. About? It looks good to me. I don't, really, I don't give it a like shit, invincible. man. It, it, just, look it like looks, invincible. yeah, it looks like literally anything. Looks I think it looks fun. Too. I really don't care. When I first um, saw it, I thought it was invincible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, Hush Two. It's gonna be the creative team returning: Jeff Loeb, Jim Lee. Jesus, calm your ass down. In the regular Jeff, Batman series, in it's the not regular like a Batman, thing. it's starting. I forget what the issue is, but it's gonna start the issue after Chip's run ends next year. So Chip Zdarsky is gonna be off Batman. Jorge is gonna be off Batman. Jeff it's Loeb and April. Jim Lee are coming back to do hush too i think this that's, is fucking stupid i was gonna say that <laughs> might be the worst thing i've ever heard in my life i think jim lee on uh on batman's cool but he's but like it is it first of all we've gotten hush two a lot i feel we've gotten <laughs> a couple true. of hush twos it's and it's true. only hush two or hatoosh because marketing Hawk-toosh. yeah because because um no not just because of marketing because it's jeff Loeb and jim lee again yeah, it is but the same creative team. I don't care. Like, this is so. Is this. Is Hush this is them, good. Hush is good, yeah, but is this is that, that casting Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom? Like, is it just them going back into the well for a nostalgia thing? Do I give a, a shit yes. about Hush? That too? might be my comic book hot take. I thought Hush was fine. <clears throat> Hush is fine. You know what? Hush I used is... to think that too. I reread Hush two years ago. JD did too. We both reread it, and we're just like, yeah, actually, this is it. good. No. Okay. okay. It's fine. It, is, it has been it like is good. six years. Like, For me, yeah, good. before I reread it, it's been like 10 years. And I was no, like, okay, is, is this Hush, good? And yeah. I think is your is a perfect entry level Batman story. It gives you all of the characters and all of the villains. And I think it works in that aspect. But I don't think it's like a top anything Batman story at all. No, I don't think I it's top 10, it. but I, I don't think it's a bad story at all. I think it's I listen, read, like I really liked it. I read like New 52 Bat. No, I read the I like read Endgame, New 52 Batman, and then I read that, I read Hush, and then I read Black Mirror, and it was like just so, just so mid just... compared to the other two. Yeah, exactly. Black Mirror is so good as well. Black Black Mirror's Mirror's in a weird order, Harper. Remember when you read Hickman's Avengers and then Bendis' Avengers after? I just read, yeah, I read everything in reverse order. Yeah, <laughs> so strange. Do you think, I asked, so I actually did ask Chip about this, if he was kicked off Batman or if what's going on, he says he quit Batman in May. So he told mm-hmm. them he was going to leave the book. So they must have been like, how do we scramble and get something after Chip Zdarsky? Let's get also Jim Lee's CEO of the company right now. Right. So it's like, does he like him drawing a monthly book again is a big deal, but yeah. do I care? It's, it's, it's like the meme of Obama giving a medal to Obama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's a, that's Jim Lee right now. <laughs> He's, yeah, because he's going to be drawing the biggest book that his company sells. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I'll read I it. Think, 
I don't. I, I mean, I guess I'll read it because it's going to be in Batman. But like, the yeah. optics of Hush Two, I. You know what it's, I mean? It's, it's just Eddie, it's pretty. Eddie's very funny, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. I guess we'll see. Um, what else? They should do the Killing Joke too. <laughs> but Hush Two like... does give like Minecraft Two energy, doesn't it? <laughs> Hush Two <laughs> or well, yeah. Joker Two energy, <laughs> but we Hush got that. Hush or do. Hush. <laughs> Yeah, hush I, the I, last day. I tell you, <laughs> hush. Let there be hush. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'll read it obviously because it's just going to be in the Batman book. But I, I can't say I'm excited for it. Uh, we got some absolute DC announcements, which were cool. Mm. So mm, yeah, we knew about this previously, but we cool. got some concrete stuff about Absolute Flash, which yep. is Jeff yeah, Lemire. I don't have cool. Nick Robles. Nick Robles. He's the artist, I think. I, I yep. forget. But it's Wally in a universe where there was never any other flashes. So Wally is look, he looks sick. He does look sick. sick. He does look sick. Wally is, and I I love that idea. Wally is a lonesome hero, teenage. So he's like Spider Man, basically, where he's like, he's never had Barry to look up to. So what does Wally look like? That's just the animated series. Yes. No, but he's, he's, he's still a teenager and he's learning to be the flash. Oh, no. Yeah, true. I disappeared. Um, but I think. I think Hunter, looks... I like your name. I like your name. Thread Thread Three Brock. I think it looks <laughs> fun. I'll probably read it. Do you guys I, I see don't... the preview? Yes, no. I do. Oh, oh looks of, sick. Of the, look at roads. Captain Cole. Yeah, he looks sick yeah. as yeah. fuck. Yeah, he looks like a yeah. like Omni Man. Would... Yeah. He does look like Omni Man a little bit. Cool. He looks sick though. I read Absolute Flash. I think it's February. I think I'm March? sold on this. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think all of these absolute books I'm going to be reading because the next one they announced was Absolute Martian Manhunter, which is a weird one, but it's Dennis Camp and Javier Rodriguez, which is a good Fuck, that is creative such team. Such a good team! Wow. Yeah, and you the could basic not premise... pick a better team for a character like Martian Manhunter, man. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. So basically, the idea behind this one, <laughs> Dennis Camp said, "Yeah, so that yeah, that's crazy." They he got a call from Scott Snyder that explained to him all the absolute universe, and he said. Pick any character outside of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Green Lantern, because those are taken. And he picked Martian Manhunter because he had this idea. The idea is that Martians are not from Mars in this universe, and that John Jones is a detective on Earth who gets like this alien Parasite? Yeah, alien psychic thing in his head. Like Venom, yes. Eddie! <laughs> and so they share this body and John! so these together. And John, so that's Martian John. Manhunter. And I think I like that it. really does sound like a lot of fun. I think that sounds really It cool. does sound good, yeah. And it is like the only way you could get me to read a Martian Manhunter book. Especially an Elseworlds Martian Manhunter book. You know, like a Martian Manhunter book that doesn't even matter. Yeah. <laughs> this, is the, this is the way they get me to read it. Um, I think it looks fun. I think it looks cool. I like... Again, a big swing where it's like he's called, Martians aren't even from Mars in this universe. That's so weird. Um, I wonder if, as well, because of the, because of, oh God, I have to sneeze. Because of this. the idea that Scott's, I really, I, you know what? I just tanked it. I didn't even sneeze there. Uh, <laughs> I rubbed it away. <laughs> uh, because of the idea that Scott Snyder just called up Dennis Camp and said, you know, any pick anybody. Are we gonna get more wacky, outlandish ideas with characters with other writers? Like, is someone's pitch gonna be for absolute Aquaman just fucking out there? Like, he's like, actually, he's an alien from space, and like, the sea is this is actually empty space, and he's the king of the sea. I don't Was know. Was there you know a Riley I mean? Rossmo Martian Manhunter book a few years ago? Am I losing my mind? Yes. yes Was there like a weird? There was a weird Steve Martian Orlando Manhunter Riley book. Rossmo. I think I remember when I saw that. I it's like eleven I issues. I thought it was Eisner bait. That's what it looked like to me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. But I, anyway, Absolute Martian Manhunter, Dennis Camp. Obviously, we're reading it. Met Dennis Camp. Yep. He's really cool. He's a really nice guy. Um, yep. The next thing, moving... I think that's... Is that it for the DC announcement? Do you have anything else, Hunter? I had a Green Lantern. They talked a little bit about Green Lantern. Absolute Green Lantern, yeah. Absolute yeah. Green Lantern, which is... Uh, John Noy um, Lindsay is the artist, I believe. Yes. And it's yeah. about Joe. But... um. That's all I have. It's, it's Joe is the main character, but Hal and John are in it. Yes, it's a it's a big cosmic uh, Lovecraftian sci-fi horror. I have that image. Yes, the big <laughs> lantern. Yeah, it looks crazy. 
But he the, says it's a Green cosmic, Lantern logo like fell to earth. <laughs> he says it's a cosmic horror book, which is yeah. really interesting. Um, and I'll read it because it's Al Ewing. So yeah, I also met Al Ewing. He seems like a really nice guy too. The cover is kind of cool. The cover is cool. Yeah, I, I I'm interested to see the takes on these characters and just all around the all around the place in the absolute universe. <laughs> Uh, the next so thing that's I, have, I have for absolute DC, I have other stuff for DC DC though. I think well, that's all I have for DC DC. So what do you have do you anything have for, for ICDC? What do, you, what do you have for DC DC? Um, I have uh, Aquaman is back. Aquaman oh, yes. number one in Talk January by Here, Jeremy you, Adams. This is such a big deal for you. God, they remembered him <laughs> after years and years. Even when Aquaman two was coming out, the DC went like, "No, we ain't bringing him back." <laughs> like that movie ain't gonna bring. But yeah, Aquaman ended. I think. The uh, Kelly Sue's run, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, Aquaman, but that got canceled because they decided to kill the Justice League, and the creative team was like, "All right, I guess no more Aquaman <laughs> books," Aquaman's even though every dead. other book continued. Yeah. Yeah. So Aquaman's back. It's an ongoing series with creative team Jeremy Adams and John Timms. Aquaman will be getting brand new powers while exploring this new status quo as lo- ruler of the Seven Seas. He has short hair now as well. Starts in January. Um and uh, he's Mara. got Mara's powers. I think it's because he has Mara's powers. Power. He swapped with Mara. Oh, okay, that's why. So does Mara Mara control fish now? Oh yeah, there's a there's a variant cover with Mara and a bunch of fish. Mm-hmm. But yes, he no longer Mara. has long hair. He looks he looks better now. <laughs> he looks like this. They he's kept the beard. The beard, yeah. Kept yeah, the that's the best look for him. I for sure. actually yeah. might read this. I'm kind of interested in it. Yeah, it looks cool. He has like a water sword. So Jeremy has um a and. Before. Is that my only DC thing besides the ones you mentioned? Uh, oh, I also have um, Justice League The Atom Project, which is a oh, new yes. series about uh, the Atom, so Ray and Ryan, figuring out how to restore powers to the proper heroes after the events of Absolute Power. John Ridley, Ryan Parrott's other writer alongside artist Mike Perkins. Captain Atom will also serve as the antagonist as he tries to prevent his powers from being found. I was going to say, how is he going to blow up in this story? He's going to actually, actually, he's like, I don't want to blow up. This is the, this is the story but he I will. don't want to blow up. But he so will. it looks like it's it's like the two atoms are trying to get everyone's powers back. And they're just like, all right, Captain Adam, time to blow up again. And he's like on the run from. <laughs> I don't want to blow up. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I don't want to blow up. <laughs> all right, I'm, sick, I'm fucking sick of blowing up. I, but, read, uh, I read Deceased. All right. I don't want to blow up. So he doesn't want to blow up anymore. Justice. But this is one of the variant covers. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Taylor. I don't want to blow up. Um, that's funny. What? what so yeah, it is about like all the atoms. Yeah. Um, that's, that's all that's... I have for. Oh, 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 yeah. This is a big one for uh, Harper here, maybe. Oh. Uh. Well, first, DC Vertigo is back. Yes. yes. Oh, that is fucking sick. As that is. That is. Actually I don't know how cool. I didn't have that down. That's. So that might awesome. be the coolest announcement. I think. Yeah, that that's so awesome. I, for, I don't know how I didn't have that written down. That new so good. new titles to be announced soon. So I don't have any titles. I don't think they announced any yet. Uh, the new mm. ha- the la- nice house on the lake, the sequel. And is it oh, lake? Which one the... is the first one? Nice house. Nice house on the lake. Yeah, and the second one is nice house. Nice house by the sea is the, sec- the, sea, is the yeah. second one. Yeah, that's going to be retroactively made as the first new vertical title. Okay. Did you? Uh, I don't. None of you guys mentioned this. So I don't know if you, you know, know the best, this, but do you guys know what the best Vertigo title of all time is? Is it Preacher? Mad, Mad Max, Max Fury Road. Road. <laughs> uh, but it, maybe it is Preacher, actually. That's it. The... Did you guys know about this um, new event that's not canon, but it's a sequel event? Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong 2. Yes, yes. I did know about this. Yes. yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, God. Hell yeah. Oh, is returning for a sequel is summer 2025. Same yeah. creative team, you know they killed it on the last one. So yeah, well, yeah for you, sure. Did they? <laughs> um, is that all DC the announced some one shots? Uh, a Lex Luthor special, which will have a return to Lex being classic Lex, Lex Luthor again. Yes, Lex Valentine's Luthor Day special with Lex Luthor right as the main now. feature, and a DC Power one shot featuring some of DC's popular black characters. Cool. That's it, though. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I have Marvel, Marvel stuff, but yeah, Marvel mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, let's start with Ultimate Wolverine. Um, oh, Chris yeah, Condon that's right. And who's the guy? Would you just, what would you forget, Hunter? Real, real quick. Um, Tim Seeley and James Gunn are making a uh, Vigilante miniseries. Oh, and Mitch, Mitch as well. Yeah, Mitch yeah. was selling uh the the Vigilante pin, uh, not pins. What is it called? Pinups, like a fucking poster. 
Oh, it looks cool. good. It looks good. The art looks good. It's not canon to the DCU, he said, which is why would he say that? Like, who, who cares? But yeah. because it is like the same peacemaker and vigilante from the show. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, Ultimate Wolverine, which yes. is Chris Condon, which I mm-hmm. he's got a book out from Image called That Texas Blood. I really want to read that. He's also writing Green Arrow right now. I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, okay. He just took over. Chris Condon and Alessandro Cupuccino, I think is how you pronounce his name. Yeah, I'm, I'm the guy that did yeah. Moon Knight, Jed McKay's Moon Knight. Um, this is the sickest fucking thing I've ever heard of. In the new 6160 Ultimate Universe, Wolverine is the Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah that's that the pitch. Cool. That's fucking sick. Mm-hmm. And, and he looks really cool. And he looks really cool. And he kind of looks like Deadpool. So it's like, is Wolverine James Howlett? Is he Logan? Or is he fucking Wade Wilson in Wade this Wilson. universe? I don't know. Yeah. But I love I love I love that. Like that that is a that is a sick pitch on its own. Wolverine as the winter soldier. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, definitely 100 percent will be reading that. There's gonna be um Dennis Camp is writing Ultimates Year One, like a one year in special. And that's gonna mm. have also the 16 6160 Nick Fury in it. They're gonna introduce him there and they're gonna introduce Shield, and that's where Wolverine's gonna first debut, isn't that? Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited for all this stuff. Uh the other thing they announced, which is this is the big Marvel Comics thing going forward, but it's the rise of Emperor Doom. It's yes. written by Ryan North and art by Oh God, I didn't write it down. I always gotta fucking write this oh, down. Yeah, he, he, he wrote he drew some of Hawks and Pox. He wrote he drew Powers of Ten. C B Villa, something like that. C something. I don't know. He's great. <laughs> the artist that I'm not remembering, he's great. And so this is gonna be our they said the way they described it is that this is the first since Dark Reign with Norman Osborne taking over the Marvel Universe. This is like the first large scale villain takeover of marvel books starting here that will be felt across the marvel universe so this is the big marvel story going forward is sorcerer supreme dr doom yeah written by ryan north who's doing fantastic four and is writing what it could potentially end up being the best fantastic four run of all time this Mm -hmm. is going to be fucking awesome i think it's going to be so good I think this could be like the best event since King and Black. <laughs> yes, I think, and 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 this doesn't even seem like it's gonna be the event. This is build up rise of Emperor Doom. Oh, this is true, yeah. But I like this new era of Marvel where we're gonna be living in Doom's world, you know. Like, and it, it, the movie definitely is helping. The movie's that. definitely <laughs> in, like yeah, but it's also Doctor Doom. What do I care? Yes. In at the booth at the Marvel Comics booth at. New York Comic Con, there was this big image of Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Doom oh, riding the Doctor T-Rex. Doom dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> so he's returning as well. And he's got a gun. Oh, it kind nice. of looks like Fortnite. Um, but I'm really excited for this. I think I said this in the chat. Listen, they're building the new fucking event. We know this. Ryan North just wrote that there is a Doom coming issue of Fantastic Four. Now we know he's writing this as well. Mm-hmm. This is very interesting. I got to speak with Spencer Ackerman, who's right, who wrote Iron Man. He's writing Iron Man right now. Yes. And what he told me, and I, I don't like saying this because I because you probably didn't know he didn't know that I was going to tell all our listeners this, but he said that um, there was huge corporate blowback to what Ryan North had planned in this book. Like oh, you told Marvel, you told us this, right? Like Marvel corporate said, no, 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 he cannot go that far. And that the editorial level of Marvel fought for him, and they won. So whatever this is going to be, this is going to be Ryan Norris' vision for Doctor Doom. For better or worse, he's taken big swings with this, and I guess we'll see. But I love the idea that that Marvel corporate was like, I don't know if you could do this with the universe. And they said, fuck you, we're doing it anyway. I love that. Below the New York. Yes. Uh, Because uh, Ackerman said that his Iron Man run, which we'll get into because it did start this week, was originally conceived as Tony's reaction to Dr. Doom as Sorcerer Supreme. And then when that got pushed back, now his run doing that will start at issue six, which is interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad Um, it's still tying in 
in some yes, way. it's still tying in. It's just that he said he had to come up with two. He had to come up with uh, five issues beforehand, which he did not know they were going to be. He was initially just mm-hmm. going to start running with the Doom stuff. Which mm-hmm. is crazy because the way this run has started feels like it's better starting the way it is than starting that because they had to do a lot of legwork. We'll talk about it later, but there's a lot of legwork in this issue coming off the last one. Yes, there is. But it's good. good. And I, and I like the idea of that. I like the idea that this seemingly that Tony's going to play a big part in this Doom story. At least a big enough part that where his book is going to be consumed by it. Um, more Marvel Comics news. This one sucks. Eddie Brock is going to be Carnage. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Soule is writing it. I saw it. a picture of that. Um, but Eddie Brock's gonna be Carnage. We don't know. Uh, we don't know who the new Venom is yet. I don't think because there is gonna be a new Venom, and I don't think it's Dylan either. I think but we should yeah. look into the Zoom call, buddy. Oh shit! Right either one. I I, I I actually would prefer Hunter as Venom. Why? Because I think it would be hilarious. You wouldn't eat a chicken, but Harper might. I, I, we, we I watched just him. did. I just did. <laughs> That's true. I mean, like a live chicken. Those were my friends. <laughs> or whatever. Oh, only ch- brains and chocolate. They contain the same thing. <laughs> Thank you for the chocolate. Um, but yeah, Eddie Brock is carnage. Weird. I guess took thirty years and no one ever something did it before, different. so we yeah, had to get something it. Something different. It's fine. Yeah, but I will not be reading. No, same. What the fuck do I care? Yeah, um, that's fair. I think that was the extent of the Marvel Comics news. There might oh, have been more. Know nothing. Not... You know nothing. Oh, Listen you got to more. things. Here we go. Power Man miniseries, a timeless. Marvel announced a five issue miniseries about Power Man from the future, introducing in the timeless one shots. Uh, he has the powers of Hulk, Sentry, and Iron Fist. Wait, what? What? Yeah. What? Luke, Luke Cage with the powers of Hulk, Sentry, and Iron Fist, starting Isn't in February. He mayor? <laughs> yes, yes. This is this is future Luke Cage. He time travels back to time, back to today. Um, okay. Creative team is a. Uh... Sorry. Uh, creative team is um, uh, Colin Kelly Lansing. and Jackson Lansing with Bernard Chang. Um, yeah. Amazing. Sorry, there's like wolves right outside my apartment. Wolves. <laughs> There's wolves. They're really they're howling and they're very loud. The howling? Sorry. Yeah. All right, well, that just scared me. I just heard one really thing. loud. I'm looking. I can kind of see. I think I see one. Right Imagine there. a wolf jumps through his. Fuck! Wolf. That'd be I'm so on the second floor. It's <laughs> mauled. Floor. <laughs> just oh, get mauled the... on the floor. We would have to upload it, right? Well, because we're recording at night and the wolves walk around this neighborhood at night. <laughs> the wolves roam the streets at night? Where do you live? I live in Alberta, Canada. That's crowd. Do they roam the streets? The mountains are like you gotta stay there. indoors? It's you do. We have a curfew. <laughs> you are, he's lying. He's definitely lying. Why would I lie about this? <laughs> okay, Hunter, the swear on so Kuma's much, memory. Man. I do. I we have coyotes, wolves, and bears. But, yeah, the but bears d- are is there rare. a curfew? Is there a curfew? Swear no, no, on the it. curfew. I'm lying. <laughs> okay, right, but the right, wolves right. and coyotes, I'm not. That's crazy. Yeah, we that's why you have to keep here. your pets inside it when the sun goes down. Otherwise, they'll be wow. a werewolf. <laughs> what? <laughs> I found out uh, what we do in the shadows was going to get a sequel movie called yeah. about werewolves that was going to be called Werewolves. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> We're werewolves, not swear like we wolves. are wolves. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. And then the other thing you miss is uh, Daredevil: Cold Day in Hell. It's I saw that. No, I did say that. Yeah, three issue Daredevil that. miniseries yes. from Charles Soule and Steve McNiven, yeah. starting in April, featuring old an old version Daredevil. of Daredevil who loses everything and eventually regains his powers. I'm down it's, for it's an cool. Old man I'm not a I'm not a huge McNiven yes. fan though. Bro, I'm not. Chill. I, I, I think I, I, I like his stuff. You know? no, I like just, the I preview know, that they release just where it just looks it. like this. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty neat. But yeah, that, that's all the news kind of I have. Of like a Frank Miller quality to him. It's it's very mm. loose. It, it, it's gotten looser as the time goes on. I think his his pencils used to be really sharp, like in Civil War. Yeah, but like and, I, uh, that's, Old Man that's what I stuff. don't like about it. Like I, really? I think both of those looks books look crap. I think just don't crazy. like crazy. I think they look awesome. 
Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No. Like think- those are the exact, I don't think I know another Magnificent book outside of those two, but granted, I don't like Avengers. Civil War and I don't like Old Man Logan. I think both of those books look just, I don't know. And they're both Mark flat. Millar. Look at they're flat. both Mark Millar, Steve Magnificent, I just realized. Yeah, they are. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I guess, is we got to solicit for the next, for Ultimate's issue number nine, which is going to be about Luke Cage, Ultimate Luke Cage. Oh, yeah. And the cover is awesome, too. The cover is awesome. Um, again, Dennis Camp doing the thing where it's just like, what's wrong with America? Let's put in an issue. Love it. Um, which is weird because there isn't really anything, is there? No, because it's a great country and he's fucking, he's ruining us by t- implying that something will be wrong with us. Tyler, by um, the next podcast, there will be a new elected. No, by the next, no. next podcast, 92. Really? Yeah. Don't you dare, by the way. It's not like Norman Osborne. I'm having fun with this podcast. Don't remind me of the inevitable barrel that we are about to roll into and set on fire. <laughs> um, Clea, you better chill. Uh, what it, would it make know. you feel better if I showed you Tom Hardy sitting on a jujitsu floor? I guess. Maybe he's got little glasses. Trying to get big or small. What? Are we, what about this guy? What about him? Oh, your favorite actor. Is that? Nah. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that your favorite actor? Don't you have no, a tattoo? Don't no. you have a, a, a picture on his on your wall that you look up to every morning? I thought you were gonna say a tattoo. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say tattoo as well. I was gonna say tattoo, and then I was like, nah, actually, you worship a picture of him on your wall. Yeah, yeah no. No. the other yeah, side. Yes. I've, got, I've got I've got rid of the hot toys. It's just him from whichever Call of Duty he was in. <laughs> Advanced Warfare. Yeah. There you go. Wow, who's the real fan, are, there, Tyler? Are we on comics now? No, 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 no. There's still a little bit more. We can barrel through these though. Um. Spider-Man 4 is going to film next year, July 2026, mm. release date. Mm. Um, cool. Tom Tom Holland said that it seems, li- it seems like Marvel won in this argument between him and Sony, and Tom yeah. Holland says he's got, like, cloud and he's been pushing for a Spider-Man movie that's going to really, like, you know, make the fans happy. He said, also, like, it seems today all you see is violence on movies. Movies and like Spider-Man on TV, yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting. This is kind of, like, a weird tidbit, but uh, Dune... Three is going to be filming like oh, early. I know you're in, um, about it's gonna. It's Dune Three is gonna have some time crossover with um, Spider Man Four, so it's possible that Zendaya is gonna be not in one of them, uh, at possible. least not for a lot. It would make sense if she's not in Dune a lot, obviously. Um, but it also could be that she's not in Spider Man a lot. It'd probably be make it'd feel a bit more impactful if she was in Spider Man less. Yeah. Yes, it also, but, also was... but the point in Dune that she's in, we probably won't see her for a while either. Okay. The cinematographer, I forget his name, likely won't return for the Batman 2 then. Greg Frazier, yeah, because he's going to be filming fucking Dune well, 3. that sucks. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It does suck, <laughs> suck. Actually, yeah. Um, what else? Okay. Blade. We're never getting Blade. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> they removed it's not on the it release. from the. Yep. Just can it. You know what? The more that they edge us with this, the more embarrassing it is. Just it is embarrassing. It. Just cancel it. You could have canceled yeah. it three like pushbacks ago. How hard is it to make a vampire movie? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know what's interesting as well? Spider-Man 4, July 2026 release date. Tom Holland just got cast in a Christopher Nolan movie, which is apparently going to be a vampire mm. movie. It's apparently really easy to make a movie about vampires. Ryan Coogler's making one with Michael B. Jordan that comes out mm-hmm. next year. Nosferatu is out in December. Has, yes, which has the mm. loudest. Did you guys see the trailer for that movie before Venom? Sinners? Yeah, looks it's cool. It's so fucking loud. It is loud. It melted my eardrums. It was fucking crazy. Um, Avengers of Doomsday I got, is also I got a trailer for the Penguin TV show when I saw Venom, and that's not a joke. <laughs> it's so weird. I got, I got, I got a trailer for Penguin. That's awesome, though. That, that is awesome. But, like, yeah. Blade was announced. I wasn't even born yet when they announced the Blade movie. Yeah, neither was I. And you were oh, I was 80? 30. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Daredevil nah. Born Again has a release date, which is March. Bruh, yeah. shut up. Uh, March. Um, your inner heart came out there. The, the trailer, the trailer. Uh, there was a new trailer. Well, sort of. It was just yeah. a similarly edited trailer that they showed at NYCC. And uh, the thing is, that fuckhead still in it. That fuckhead is still in it. Who? Yeah, well, obviously he's gonna still be in it. Cut so around it. The pedophile dead. hunter. Come on, Khan's dead. Oh. Kamala Khan's dad. Um, yeah. What's interesting about the, the panel was weird because at Comic-Con, there was a random panel called Marvel Fanfare. And if you showed up to it, halfway through, 
Vincent D'Onofrio and Charlie Cox on stage Cosco, and said yeah. secretly this was a Daredevil Born Again panel. And then they revealed the trailer and they revealed the release date. Mm. And I'm just like, everyone that I was, I heard people like over, like talking over the shoulder being like, apparently at this weird Marvel panel, Daredevil came out and, and gave a trailer. That's, that's been, so annoying. Yeah, I would have loved to have known that. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Greg Capullo might be a meanie pants. Oh, yes, yeah. Greg, Greg, Greg Capullo <laughs> might be a meanie is a great way to put that. Famous Batman artist, Greg Capullo. Do you want to yes. go into that? It doesn't matter. Uh, he, he was just going on Twitter. His colorist quit. Yes, for MCO his, uh, quit um, Wolverine Revenge. Saying like yeah. the work. I believe Greg Capullo's money. exact words were, I get I get paid an exuberant amount of money and have all the time I want to work on pencils for this book, but I'm annoyed that this guy who has almost no time is upset that they're not yes. getting who has paid to color much more books than just this one. He basically yeah, yeah. Greg Capullo went on a run for a second man. and the dog ran upstairs. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll talk about it. Basically, uh, oh me. But yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, I guess. Yeah. How would you feel, Hunter, if I just went mask and then you heard copy and I actually did turn into Venom right now? How would you feel? <laughs> you come out and bring like an innocent person, like eat him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just eat his fucking normal. head. <laughs> Man, sorry. But anyways, yeah, I'll explain for the people listening that are actually interested. <laughs> Greg Capullo yes. basically said, like, oh, if you want to be a comic artist, you have to understand that you have to be working like 16 hour days, seven days a week sometimes, but that's what you signed up for. But then even Dan Morris was like, hey guys, I play sports. Like, I have a life. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't see your sacrifice, family. You, you don't see your, sacrifice friends. your time and your mental health just so that you can you color a book. Mm. He's just just like, yeah, get sometimes, paid fucking peanuts. Sometimes it is a lot of work, but still make sure you have a life outside of it. But Greg Capullo was just like, hey, this is what you signed up for kind of thing. It is yeah. true that comic book artists and colors, when they first start off, they get paid nothing. <laughs> like it, for DC Comics, it is if you're an artist for DC Comics, it is one hundred fifty dollars per page, wow. and you have to do you have to do twenty four a month at least. So it is very difficult. Covers pay more, which is why Jim Lee is obsessed with covers. I think covers pay about a thousand dollars if you do do a cover. So that's why there's so many Jim Lee variants out there. But Jim Lee uh, pays yeah. himself though, no? Yeah, also he pays himself. But Greg Capullo, he since he's been around for so long and he's like a legendary comic book artist, he's worked on like Image, Marvel, DC, and more. He gets paid a lot more than your regular artist and colorist. Yes, because so. he's a because he's a comic superstar. Yeah. So he and plus this book, he's been working on forever. He's been working on for over a year, and it's only five issues. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. See, I would I would be curious to know how much FCO colors like because he he colors. I would assume more than just Wolverine Revenge, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's two yeah. versions of Wolverine Revenge as well. There's the exactly. regular version and the Red Band version, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. Werewolf by Night 3 came in this week. I didn't get it again. Me neither. <laughs> um, okay. Well, okay, now we have comic talk. Which okay. Do we do? Which do we well, I do. I read Wonder Woman. Avengers was fine, Tyler. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, I, I did think it would be more, but it was fine. It was a good issue. It's fine. Avengers, okay, real quick. Avengers, Dr. Doom <laughs> shows up to the Avengers and he says, why don't you guys actually like be like good superheroes and like fix shit yeah. around the world? And they're like, oh, they actually it's Dr. because uh, we're sick and you're just a real big meanie. Yeah. And Dr. Doom goes, ah, all right, just read read my new book coming out and like be jealous that I can actually do this shit that you can't do. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah He's like, just good. imagine if you wore green and you were a dickhead. And that is like the crux of that book. <laughs> yeah, yes. Imagine if you wore green is like a majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, absolute Wonder Woman. Yeah. Hayden was Sherman, awesome. Kelly Thompson. It was awesome. Now I there were a lot. There were Hot three take. pages here where there was a lot of dialogue, and I just skipped those pages. But outside of that, I read it. <laughs> Outside of those big, outside of the bigger ones, what is this I, I did read. About? One second. I am here. I'm here. I'm listening. But it's this dog's crying. She's crying. I don't know where she is. I don't like it. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> I got really yeah, mad. I know. Yeah. Shut There's up. A lot of, I'm angry about this. There's a lot of baby. Yeah. A lot of baby. Um, like um, yeah. hot take. I think I like this more than Batman. Yeah. Right, you, okay. Does that, you know, does that look, shock I, you? Does that perhaps anger you? Does that make you want to have your alter ego perhaps show himself no Do, does it look like 
sup does it look like i'm angry does it look like something's happening to me that might potentially make it seem like i'm transforming into something a little bit a little <laughs> i just bring out another box of venom wings <laughs> I, I was thinking i was kind of hoping you would eat it like devouring like when eddie's just like <laughs> i was i was I, I was eating messier than i probably wanted to i'm gonna look back on this episode and go jesus christ man you ate three pieces of fucking venom pizza and three wings like I'm was it good dinner to yeah it was delicious <laughs> really would you get it again yeah. So I don't, probably not because I imagine the promo will be done by the time that I would order it again. Like you really should not order pizza more than like once mm -hmm. a month, maybe. God, it's That's fair for you. That's fair. Do the whole that, podcast. Whole I've pizza. Been... Yeah, I have. Do, do, for medium, do, medium, do, not, not like a large. That was a really dumb well, this... sentence because you don't live in New York. You we order pizzas fucking weekly. This dumbass dog got herself stuck yeah. under the bed and she was. But like when you order a pizza, you generally probably just want to eat at least most of the pizza, if not all the pizza. You want to just yeah, sit and eat the pizza. You order for your night. family, no? That that yeah. pizza was was like the daily calorie limit for an adult male. Just that, well, you, like you, you couldn't eat, eat anything else most in a day don't without eat a whole pizza. Though no, yeah, you're usually I, sharing. I feel like most people do. I feel like I feel a like lot that's of people do. Not either. true. I feel like no. at, it, at least here when I order a pizza, you eat two, maybe three slices. But like, but how I usually do, do like. Pizza? I'll, I'll order a large, and then my partner and I will split it. Like we'll we'll just yeah, share well, that large. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I feel like I've only ever you seen you order people, one like, whole pizza and you pizza. eat it in front of her. That's it. Like <laughs> did you <laughs> just yeah, like, Not what me. do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do I mean? Wait, why are you eating whole pizzas and complaining? I, I, li about I, I literally, I actually watched a like a dude talking about. Cal he was talking about lunchly and shit like that. You know the yes. fucking local. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he literally brought up pizzas and said exactly what I said. He's like, you know, when you order a pizza, you're probably gonna eat the whole pizza, but you do it occasionally because it's so bad for you. I, I just, just thought that's what people that do. That's what people do. I feel like that's I weird. I feel like that's maybe that's not an American thing. Is that how big your pizza here? Because this is like way like, bigger that's than my that. head. That looks well, that's probably that's probably why. That looks about the same size for me. We got good pizza, man. That's a thing. That's true. But anyway, <laughs> I've heard you have that pizza. election, and I don't. Shut up! <laughs> Wonder. I just want to mention real quick. I was going to mention before. I've been so focused on the comments. I want to mention. Episode. I'm voting for Trump. It is. It is a good. <laughs> It is a good episode. I've been really enjoying this conversation, but it's been so focused that the whole time, Harper, you have that passenger sign behind you, which is very cool that you have that. Yes. But I thought I, it was like, I thought it was an advertisement for the pizza they had. I thought it was like the, the prices <laughs> for like a pepperoni and stuff. This, I, I got this when I was waiting. So like we left the concert the other night um, and we were parked like maybe 20 meters away from the front door. It's a really nice theater in, in, in Melbourne called the Palais. Um, and I was like, look, I'm probably not going to like, what are the odds that I would get to meet him again? The last time I did, I waited for fucking three hours until like one 30 in the morning. And when he came out, he was like, oh shit. Well, first of all, congratulations for coming out. But he came out and it was like, he was like, oh, I didn't know you guys were here. I would have come out early, blah, blah. So I was just like, That's, I don't think I'm going to get a chance to meet him again. And so the way we had to drive every other car was hooking a right turn. And we just went like left past the Palais. And there were like five people standing at like the sideshow door. And I was like, fuck it. I got to do it. I, even if I wait for three hours, who gives a fuck? My car's right there. I'll drive home. It's fine. And then as we were waiting there, like one of the ladies that was like doing the promo at the front just came past with those posters and like handed a, a few of them out to us. And, and I got one. That's cool. And, and then I, I thought made it him. was a Pizza Hut menu. He came out in 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes that was it. it wasn't three hours i was fully i was sitting against the wall out there like i'm gonna be here until i'm fucking like i was gonna say 28 even though i'm 87 but yeah yeah <laughs> harper life update good times it's good i'm proud of you every every harper life update i'm like good for him thanks man i made i made his security go oh and then one of them clapped <laughs> That's very but nice. anyway but anyway did you show him that I did actually. I said, "Do you want to be on the podcast?" <laughs> um, uh, okay. Wonder oh yeah, Wonder Woman. Woman. I thought this was great. It was awesome. Yeah. I liked it uh, a lot. You liked it more than Batman. I did like it more than Batman. No, it's not as good as Batman. I think it could it end up being as good as Batman. I think this issue was less than I thought it would be. I thought I thought this issue would just be a big monster fight. 
Um, but we get background, we get info about we get a Diana. lot of background. But her, her origin. She just looks so fucking cool. Nothing matters other than that. I feel yes. you know, it's like this book looks so sick. I, I met Hayden Sherman. I spoke to Hayden Sherman for a second, and I told them how you feel about how you guys are like, oh, Wonder Woman's lame. I don't like Wonder Woman. And I never said went, that. Wait, wait, wait. You went to them and said, oh, my friends hate Wonder Woman. I did. I said, I have a couple friends who like, not. I said, not that they hate Wonder Woman, but they're of the opinion that like, oh, Wonder Woman's like uh, kind of lame. And I was like, and I said, you know, all you need to do is get fucking Kelly, Kelly Thompson on that book. And she'll write the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. And combined with Hayden Sherman drawing it, this book is like, it just looks so cool. It's just so sick. Like the idea of just Wonder Woman's coming down, writing a a bone skeleton Pegasus with a giant gut sword. It just looks cool. It it is cool. I I like the sword. I like her design a lot. Yeah, she looks really sick. I I think this could be Mm -hmm. like the coolest Wonder Woman design Really, I was about to say, is this the coolest Wonder Woman design? I think it's my second favorite Wonder Woman. Design. It might be. My first is uh when she goes to where she go? She goes to Valhalla. That that suit. No, cool. no, 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 no. The best Wonder Woman design is that one. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, this is holding heads. I think this might be my favorite design, and it kind of has like similarities. Yeah, that is the like worst the picture I've ever seen. I know. Is she for real? Is she for real again? I'll be right back again. I'm sorry, guys. Keep talking. That's okay. Guys. That dog is voting for Donald J. Trump. <laughs> I, I heard that actually. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that that dog's doing that. But yeah, um, do you like um, Wonder? Like, well, here's the thing. Like, like, like Tyler said. Um, he was expecting it to be more. So for me, I was just like, th- that was a Wonder Woman issue. Like, that could have not been absolute anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Did that feel any different to any other Wonder Woman thing? <laughs> it did, because yes. Wonder Woman comics That's, are very I, much, I they're very political, which isn't a bad thing at all. Like, well, they're, just they're just too woke for me, and I can't handle it's it. just... Well, when for me, that when they she had a like, brother, like, then I'm it like, just okay, felt like good. Justice League Dark. It felt like the second, uh, the James Tyne and Justice League Dark. That's just yes, that yes, it is similar to just Justice League Dark. But it didn't. That's what I mean. It didn't feel Frost like absolute Batman. Batman I was like, okay, this does feel like it's not bad. You could slot this in with Wonder Woman, and I, I yes. Well, she's done different things. Like she's doing like really dark be. magic here and stuff. So yeah, it's true. She's raising. It's a cool design. It will oh my god, I'm to look at to look at Christopher Reeves. But no, Tyler, hold it the way you were holding it. <laughs> you, you had like his face like, like peering fine. over. <laughs> I think oh, I think, Chris I, Reeves. Just, I think this book will unfold. Look at, look at it, Hunter. Look at <laughs> this book. I, I I like it a lot. I think it was really cool. I think that this version of Wonder Woman is really cool looking. I really, I am so curious to know what Superman's gonna end up looking like. You know, I, I like, I'm not physically. I'm he looks, looks cool like, as fuck. He, he looks, the Superman like, was my most excited. I, just I like agree. What Me he's too. gonna be like, you know? We saw Edgy, probably. We saw pictures for that, and it's like, um, you saw Lois Lane looks like she's working Lois. for her dad. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's working for Sam Lane. She's like, um, she's like in the military. It's cool. <laughs> Wow. Yes, good job. You good think job. Jeff Bezos success in this universe? In the absolute DC universe? Mm-hmm. Sure. Why? Because the, the word Amazon is banned. That's funny. That's funny. This guy's, this mm. guy's a comedian. You ever thought about doing stand up, buddy? What do you think I do this? I don't time? think it's funny. I don't think it's funny at all. <laughs> you think what do you get? think of like a clown? Like you think I, I amuse you? I think uh I think I, I am doing stand up right now. I said hey Lois and appear Griffin voice and Harper backed up. <laughs> So, yeah, that's true. I did. It was funny. I, it was because you whispered it under your breath. <laughs> oh, wow. But it was good. I like Absolute good. Wonder Woman a lot. I did I think, too. Um, I wonder what her lasso is because they don't say it. It's just a red glowy stream. Yeah. I think it'll unfold more clearly. But I'm, I'm in it. I love that she's raised in hell. <laughs> I think that's I think that's real neat. I love that segment where it shows like the years going by and how they turn. Oh their my god. Into a home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. Pizza, pasta, wings, so many snacks, so little time. That's kind of oh, hard. That's, that's nice. kind of good. That's kind of good. I'll give them that. I just noticed. <laughs> that, that, that is... All right. All right. They've got me. They've got me. Harper, can you keep oh, the fuck? box forever? 
I, I do want to keep the pizza box. I'm not you lying. Keep them I think I will keep the pizza box. You should have it like somehow like behind you. Like put it on the bookshelf. Yeah, I'll put it on the bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> I can, yeah. What? Actually. Knock it off. Like a um, what else? I, that's, that's... Why the fuck am I Miles Morales? What's up, Morales? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's up danger? <laughs> Why am I Miles Morales? Uh, what's up, danger? <laughs> Anyway, is that it for Wonder Woman, do you think? I like the scene where Wonder Woman gets, like, heat-breathed, fire-breathed by a, by a lizard, and then just like, hey, no. And then she just, like, hugs it. Mm-hmm. That's very Wonder Woman. That that really captures, like... As a baby. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, it's very much, you know, her character. It's very Diana. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of looks actually very good out there, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you should just keep it there. I might just keep it up. There. This will be the Better part be of the podcast where, for some reason, it's just my camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, that's all the comics I read. All right, well, Superman came out. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Superman! Oh yeah, it. this is where this is where Lois is Superwoman again. Yes, right? Dan Mora on Superman is a wish fulfilled. It is what DC. This. It is it is the book that DC should be doing. Chris Reeve is back, by the way, on the back cover. Um, Appreciate. It. Just like, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Just yeah, just oh my god. Like yeah. it feels good to be reading a book, such a big book with such a premier artist behind it. This book has an insane twist at the end, which I'll spoil because fuck it, why not? Okay. Yeah. Um, but at the beginning we start at the end, and okay. Superman's fighting this guy called the Timekeeper. Time time. Oh, trip. I know what you're talking about. I saw this actually. <laughs> I yeah. saw this tour. Harper, check this out. So oh my god. Yeah. He's fighting this the time trapper, crazy. right? And the time trapper is going through this whole verbose monologue. At the end of time, it has been said that everything dies, but we know that's not true, is it, Kal-El? Superman is forever. I'm forever. Our cl- our conflict will never end. And he's talking to Superman. Superman's like, fuck you. You eat shit, you dickbag. Or what? You know how Superman usually talks. <laughs> and so yeah. then him and Lois go out into the city and they fight Doomsday. Oh no, Doomsday okay. back. Why is Doomsday back? And then they're fighting him. And then the time trapper shows up and Superman's like, oh my God, you're the time trapper. And this is before the end where they had met, you know, the monologue he was just doing. And then the time trapper is like, Superman, I need your help. Uh, like some bad shit's happening. And then Superman's like, hey, uh, who are you, man? Like, wait, why are you talking wait, to me like we know before, each other? Before you're real, before you're real, Harper, who do you think it is? <laughs> the time oh trapper. This is, this is an old enemy of Superman who's asking for his help. An old enemy. For some reason, I was thinking uh, Mr. Mixel Pitalik or Mr. <laughs> Mixel Plix, but it's uh, an old enemy of Superman. You know like it. Nemesis. You definitely know the nemesis the, you would, of Superman. You would 100% I'll, know who he is. I'll kill myself if, if it's Black Adam. I'll actually. I'll <laughs> no, no, a, a Superman, a specifically. It is Superman. an actual. It's not, it's not like a Shazam villain. This is okay. a Superman villain. It's an actual Superman villain. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. I have there's no a lot idea. of them right now, but right, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, I don't... I'm gonna I'm just I'll show you, right? So Superman says, okay. cut to the chase, okay. you can visit anywhere in time. Why are you here now? Time Trapper says, because this moment is special. The horror that will happen next will decide the fate of everything. Now, I have died many times before, once at your own hands, back when you knew me as Doomsday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> We have been enemies for millennia, Superman, but now I need your help. Why? Why? Skinny Doomsday what? is the time. What? 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 Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Why was he? So he was my fighting. Fucking mind. Genuinely <laughs> flipped to the last page and went, What? <laughs> like, yeah. Love it. Okay. I love it. Fuck yes. Okay. Wait, yeah. But... Okay. It looks cool. Like, it's I guess Dan Mora. Dan Mora, yeah. Yeah. Who was he but... fighting in the middle then? He was fighting Doomsday. Old Doomsday. Doomsday. It was okay. Yeah. That's a so that's an issue built around that he's fighting Doomsday and then the reveal of like future Doomsday comes. He's just when, another when, Doomsday. When he pulls that's the so hood funny. down. Superman says, "How?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. He says, How? What? <laughs> it's awesome. That's funny. I, yeah, I really love that. And then we get the, you know, coming to Superman. How did Lois Lane get her superpowers? What sinister secret does the time trapper hold? He's Doomsday. That's the secret. That's, that's, wow. 
Uh, it's so it. funny. Yeah, it's so, yeah. That, that's in it. I love it. Early. Dan Moore is gonna be drawing it, so of course I'll be reading. I it. think I'll. I think I'll read. I think I'm in. Iron Man. Dude, that's that's that. That would be like if in like uh, Arkham Origins you were fighting the Joker throughout the story, and then Blas Black Mask reveals that he is also the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> no, <but> it's just. <laughs> it's just that like Doomsday is so, like he can talk and he's eloquent and he's yeah, like, and he's just skinny, a guy. Yeah. He's just a guy. <laughs> Just the yeah. dude. I love that. Well, in, yeah. in the death of Superman, Superman knows to go to Metropolis because he reads it in like a in like a wrestling ad and he says Metropolis. So okay. I guess the idea is that like he could get smart over time. Okay. So I, I guess, guess he's evolved like it he's evolved, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. If he if he's got till the end of time, I guess he could just become a super genius, you know? You know, that is honestly that is a good like that's a good twist and take yeah. when you're trying to invent character. new shit in comic books because that is so hard now. <laughs> like, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I'm gonna read it. I think I'm curious where yeah. that goes. Iron Man. Ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba oh, is that is that his? Yeah. Very nice. That's good. Did, did uh, what'd you think? Um, you know. When all the previews for this were coming out and it was like, Tony Stark's got nothing and he's in this fucking like steampunk armor because technology's failed him and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I, I I think I was idiotic in the fact that I assumed that the issue would just start there and then we would have to work backwards to find out how he got there. But I love the fact that this is just so... This was like an entire issue of setup to get to the story that I think Spencer Ackerman wants to tell. Like this felt so continued on from the last run mm -hmm. he's wearing the model prime armor for the whole issue i've said before that is my favorite armor the i was thing. so happy that he wears that for the whole thing it was no so way. cool it's the best it's so sick it is really cool i liked this issue a lot i think that yes I, when i was speaking to spencer ackerman i told you about this but i saw it on the pod but i kind i didn't trap him but i did ask him a question i was like listen man you're writing iron man and there's a lot of people out there that think Iron Man is best when he when he like is t on the line of morally gray. Mm. And I think that's wrong because I think Tony Stark is a good person, whether or not he thinks it, whether or not every action he does is defensible. He's a good person. And sometimes he just has to do things because that's how the situation dictates it. He doesn't feel good about it, but he's got to do it. Mm. And I asked him, like, do you think Tony Stark is like a naturally good person? And he said, yes, he does. And that mm. Tony Stark is a good person. This run will be about pushing Tony to do certain bad things because he can yeah. kind of justify them morally. That's going to be the doom stuff we get into, I think, eventually, they said. Yeah. Um, but I've this said to you before, it, really, it just really isn't that hard. Like, Tony Stark can be more ego and more dick measuring, but 90% of the time, Tony Stark is a billionaire with the moral compass and personality of like a blue collar worker who just fucking gets it. And like, yeah. you got me excited when you said that at the start of this issue, it was just Tony Stark listening to some union people and being like, Hey, look, whatever you want, whatever you need, we'll write it into the contract for the factory. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. And that is exactly what I want. <laughs> that's yes. all I want. Well, it's just Tony Stark, man of the people. Like you'd like yes, to think but that's, but he always was it like, yeah. I feel like, it, like, maybe it's the movies that give that misconception, but, like, comic book Tony Stark, especially at his peak in, like, the 80s and the 90s, that was him. He's just a, he's just a guy. Yeah, you'd like to think of Tony Stark. People think, especially now, like, you know, Tony's like Elon Musk or something. He's larger than life. He's not, because Elon Musk is a fucking way. dickhead. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's like, um, this isn't the perfect, obviously, apt comparison, but he's sort of like a Robin Hood where he mm. has all this wealth, and nothing gives him more happiness than to giving it the, to people that don't have it. Yeah, correct. And to like yeah. sharing his incredible mind and his incredible inventions with the people that need it the most, you know? Mm. That's like, that's why he wakes up every day. Because cause he knows if he does that, he'll feel better about himself. Yeah. You know? And so just that, it's that is so simple. But a lot of people do fuck that up. And it is ridiculous to me that like uh, people the the most simple premise for a character and somehow again they mess it up you know and i think mm -hmm. tony is obviously more complex than that he's not so simple he's not like a rock simple, solid simple no. character like you read more tony and you get more about him but at the end of the day it's very easy to write tony stark as an interesting likable character 
Yeah. Because he is. Because he just, just ride him like you just have to ride him like he's a guy. Not yeah. ride him that he's a capitalist billionaire. Don't write him as a caricature of like, I don't know, some sort of social commentary. You can put all of that stuff in there when it comes to people with money and how they misuse it. But like at the end of the day, you don't want to read about a guy who is all ego and all money. You want to read about the guy behind that and has somehow found himself into that position. Yeah. Like he says in that board meeting, he's like, are we not rich enough? Like yeah. for him, it's not about money. It's not. It's, not about it's money, more. Yeah. It's about betterment of the world and innovation. He's on the Avengers. He's a superhero. Exactly. You know. Yes. He says one thing. Spencer Ackerman told me the way he kind of views Tony. I thought this was interesting. Where he was like, "If you grew up with the kind of insulation, the wealth, the the knowledge, everything that Tony Stark had, it would be hard for you to see people as more than just like numbers, stats, sheets." And mm. I think that is and and. I think that's interesting because like that is how Tony sees certain people. Like Tony is down to earth. He is kind of thing like, um, you know, a man of the people, but he also, he's also forgetful and not necessarily that he forgets things, but like a lot of the times I think issues are caused not because he's like an asshole that causes them, but rather he's just overlooks them because he's thinking about the next thing. Yeah. And he also will like be like, ah, and throw money at a problem instead of tackle it. Yes. You know, and I think, I think that's, part of what makes Tony such an interesting character is that he isn't flawless in his execution of these things. He's always trying to figure out, he's always trying to learn more about people, about how to do the like, right thing, you know? I also think that like outside, outside of like Dan Slot's run where I definitely got the, the unfortunately that Elon Musk vibe where it's like, oh, here's a guy with a lot of money, except what if he was just a, just an unrepentant dickhead most of the time. Oh, but, like, outside of that, in the history of Iron Man, if you've forged this idea, like we were just talking about, that he's not down to earth and all he views is people as what they can do for him and he's just ego and blah, 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 you have no, there's no basis for that. You know what I mean? It's like me going, oh, well, you know, you know how Bruce Wayne is racist. Even though there's yeah. no history of that, there's no reason to think that. It's yeah. just like, oh, you know, of course. And saying yeah. that as, like, a blasé fact. So. like... I really don't think it's that hard to write. This is going to sound stupid. I think you write Tony Stark like you write Rick Grimes. You know what I mean? You write no, a character that you love and you follow and occasionally they do something, they blow Melon's head off in fucking Extremis and you go, yeah. ooh, that was really rough, but also he was kind of put in that position. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just, that's it. Not, yeah. you know, he's persecuting the mutants and, and whatever, whatever the fuck was going on with civil war like like yeah. it's not that hard really yeah. just comes down to that one book really comes down to it anyway that's iron yeah. man rant over this issue was good i like it it is good. I, this set up justine hammers back cool i guess i assume we'll see more of how she came back but i guess that's interesting it kind of opens the door like the the way she said she came back makes me think that at some point obadiah stain and and justin hammer will come back even though they've been dead for like four decades now yeah you know what i mean i feel like the door is open that they will come back which is kind of like i don't know if there's one thing that i wouldn't want in iron man comics is for them to undercut obadiah stain's death because i think that is the hardest moment in a comic book ever it, did, i is genuinely it, is it the moment think... where he says um who won and tony says someone lost like Someone like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He walks yeah, out of the flames after Obadiah Stane blows his fucking head off. And, and yeah. a guy, like a worker at the Stark factory goes, what happened in there? And Tony just goes, someone lost. Fucking yeah. sick. It's yeah. so sick. <laughs> yeah. Um, a good issue. I feel as though I've ranted. Is this a good, a, is this a good episode or not? I feel like this is not a good one. I think it it's is. a good one. I'm just, this it's dog a, is it's fucking heavy. Uh, can't be running around it's, it's everywhere, It's just a man. lot of God stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah. It is a lot of this stuff. Sounds, I, feel, lot, I, feel, yeah. I feel overwhelmed this episode. I feel like I haven't yeah. had an opinion about anything because all it's been is like this and this and this. And this. I will Did say we talk that, about Venom in this episode? Yeah, the no. recording is over, or at least the the we've been in the Zoom call for at least two hours. Uh, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. New Nightwing. I just wanted to mention this one moment in this new Nightwing issue. I thought it was cool. Tom Taylor's run ended with a with a fart. Nobody, I think, I thought, even I thought you about called it. him Tom Trailer. No, Tom Taylor's run ended last week, and then we already are getting a new issue of Daredevil of Daredevil Nightwing. Daredevil. 
I can't believe um, they're releasing Daredevil when Nightwing just ended. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Those monsters. But it's so fascinating. We already are getting like the different take on Daredevil. This is Dan Waters. Different take a... on Daredevil. He did it again. He did it again. <laughs> on Nightwing, yeah. we're already getting a different take from Tom Taylor's run. He says to this guy, I thought this was just a really good line. Dexter Soy is on art, so it also looks really good. I almost called him Matt. <laughs> Dick says... <laughs> He says to this criminal, listen, I'm the nice one. Everyone says it. But Bloodhaven is Nightwing's town. And tonight I'm footing, I'm putting my foot down. You don't house. want it to be on your neck. It's like, ooh. Like he, oh. he I like that a lot. I think that's really what cool. was was Kingpin in this issue or not? Uh no. And we didn't get any more of those like seven deadly sins, which I thought was kind of weird. Mm. But um yeah, it was good Daredevil. Is Dick a priest in this? Dick, yeah. Oh, she's running up the stairs. You can see. <laughs> yeah, I saw. That's, a, that, that's your symbiote, dude. <laughs> no. Uh, no, he's not. Which is a shame. Oh my god, we, we haven't talked about it. The last issue of Dead. I told you about how, like, speaking of the priesthood, Matt quit, quit being a priest at the, in the start of the newest yeah, issue. It's like it's like seven dialogue boxes of him going like, "Here's how you, here's how you quit like the the priesthood. You have to go through all of these different steps." You have to write these letters and blah, 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 and then be confirmed. And then he goes, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> he just like quit. <laughs> it's like, so that guy. It's just He's such left. an asshole. <laughs> he just went, yeah, look, this is the way you do it, but I ain't doing that. It's like you tell, tell your boss like a two week notice or you don't say you're quitting. You just stop showing up. You just, you just literally walk out the door. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, oh, I'm nah, I'm done. God, he's a, he's uh, a thank you for listening. Oh, I, finished I finished it. I finished the book. It. How was that part? More detailed than you would like. <laughs> How long was it? Not that long. Um, How yeah, many chapters. No, God, no, <laughs> two pages. Hey, Tyler, Tyler, I finished it. I heard. Yes. Did you hear the <sighs> following conversation part yeah, of that? I got to read The Shining. I know. I'm four chapters into The Shining. No! It's, good. it's fucking good. Hey, that was One Piece. It's, yeah, good. I, I really like it. These are all the books you like I One Piece? Read. These are the comics I bought. So, like... <sighs> East of West, you know, nice. You, you like One Piece, though? I do like One Piece, yeah. It gets really good. It gets really, really good. You, but I was looking at when you told me it gets really good, and you said it gets really good at 100? <laughs> that, okay, it's good, but when it gets to 100, then it, that's when I understood, like, oh... I get why I'm people at, call it the greatest like, story ever made. I'm at like 14 right now. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, like it is good, but it's just when it hits Arlong Park, That's which is the arc that starts at 100. That's when I'm like, I get why people call it the greatest story ever told. All right. I can see it. I like Luffy. He's a silly little guy. He is a silly little guy. I like his powers. I like how they show him. Gum gum pistol. That's fine. Exactly. I'm going to start saying that. They had a giant Luffy at, um, at Comic-Con. It was cool. Mm-hmm. This is a, Tyler, there's a character... In The Shining, it's shining. like showing Jack Torrance the Overlook and like telling him about the the boiler and stuff. And it's like, it's just like seven pages of this guy ranting. Mm-hmm. Some of the shit he says is so funny. It's like, he says, um, Mr. Ullman, he says, heat the West Wing one day, Central Wing the next, East Wing the, the day after that. Ain't he a crazy man? I hate that little fucker. Yap, yap, yap. All live long day. He's like one of those little dogs that bites you on the ankle, then run around and then piss all over the rug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this, that dog. Like yeah. This little fucking dog right here. Uh, yeah. Tyler Hunter was asking me about that moment in It. I heard. No, I hear everything you Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, yeah, no, it was. Yeah. Um, I, I get what he's writing. You, you know, you I said, said you to. Loved it, right? No, I didn't say that. I said to. Uh, friend of the show ryan he asked me how it was and i said it is like i loved it one of the it's like the most transcendent like life-changing book you've ever read but also clearly written by a madman high on drugs <laughs> it's like <laughs> so it's yeah. crazy all right yeah. well uh we'll end there i guess okay yeah. um 290 uh thanks for listening five star i think i might i think i might take a couple weeks off did I say a couple weeks off? No. I think I might. No, you signed the contract, bro, till 300. What's me? happening next week? Who gives a shit? We're going to be Let talking me have to a look. each can other. I, can I have a look? We're hanging out. This is how we hang out because we live in different countries. Uh, yeah. You realize this, it's 1 a.m. right now, all right? <laughs> you mm-hmm. just have to wake up, 
and fucking jump on and it's like a normal time for you. You had pizza. Yeah, you had Venom I pizza. Did. Lucky pizza. you. I have no comics next week. That's exciting. I think I have one. That's <laughs> Yeah. Um, hey, perfect time to start one piece. <laughs> Not gonna happen. You will. Yeah. Oh, no, God, it'll never I, happen. I, really, I know it'll oh, never no, happen. Next week, Wolverine Revenge issue three. I really do have to read The Shining though, don't I? Like, I will. I just. I just have to like. Oh, I to... heard that. That was so yeah, that. that was so sweet. What? Oh. Anyway, yeah. I want to eat so much. I'm sorry. All right. Anyway, yeah. Do you, do you want episode, some? Boys, we'll, I do. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week with 291. God, it's 290. Anyway. We're already at 300. Oh, oh wait. Be just massive. Wait. Is this, wait, is this one 290? Yes. Just wait. Just wait. Bro, I'm sorry. so hungry. Oh, Iron Man. I know. Yeah, Iron Man. Iron Man. Clear, calm your ass down. One yeah. of the best of all time. Oh, that's Such cool. a good issue. All right, anyway, you know, I could be wrong, know. Tyler. You know who's in that issue, I think? Who? My favorite character of all time, apparently, Ultimo. Oh! I might talk about Ultimo more than any motherfucker on this planet. I swear to God.